is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Well, let's get back to it. Teats and to teats. <laughs> no, not teats. This is a teat-free zone. <coughs> Tweets and such from last night. Uh, David Blackpool says, Nick, what's up with Blackpool? That's an excellent question, and uh, I will only take answers, uh, or I only take uh, phone calls on that subject this evening. What is up with Blackpool? Hmm? Salome says, my daughter celebrates her birthday on the 28th of February, the, uh, when there isn't a 29th. These are, I've got, I've got deja vu. There's a glitch in the matrix. Leslie text, pretty sure I haven't read uh, this one. 48 is the new woke answer. Um... <laughs> is that a uh, what's the uh, life, the universe, and everything uh, question? Oh, two, oh, six times eight, right? Everybody got that wrong last night, apart from me. Stuart says I have a maths degree. Six eights are zero point seven five. Verified the answer with Alexi, uh, Alexa, Siri, Jat. Ch ch oh, <laughs> I can't speak. Can we do the show over? No. Sam says, why are we talking about Blackpool? Isn't it just like Nuneaton by the sea? There's no such place. Rebecca says, did you notice that George Galloway's wife was given off Melania vibes in the photographs that were splashed all over? <laughs> no, I didn't notice that, no. I noticed that she was wearing a fetching, um, whatever that was. You know, the fetching uh, thing that she was wearing. Uh, Rebecca says, did you notice that George Galloway's wife was giving off Melania vibes in the photographs that were splashed all over social media? I felt sorry for her, says Rebecca, for a nanosecond, and then I uh, wondered if they'd be heading home in two cars. <laughs> George Galloway's wife is giving off uh, your vibes, Melania. I don't care. She's not that bothered. Matty says, the Rochdale by-election, that's how he's written it, by, B-I, new word, election. Is that what that was? I had no idea. I didn't know it was so wokey cokey. Wokey dokey. It was a by election, was it? The Rochdale by election also proves that when you get a low turnout, it enables politicians on the fringe to waltz into Parliament. You always say how important it is to vote. As usual, Nick, you are correct in every respect. Correct. Yeah, that's right. I did the mathematics. I'll do it again if you want. I'll do mental arithmetic on the air. Oh, no. He got 40% of a 40% turnout. That's 16% of the electorate. 16, one six. That's, um, I don't know, what's another word of saying weak? Isn't it? It certainly isn't this, uh, the, the end of civilization as we know it, as some of the papers have been writing up today. And uh, Titchy Suitside uh, size uh, came out and uh, stood uh, beneath his lectern and um, just bloviated on and on about uh, this being the end of the world as we know it, and he doesn't feel fine. Like R-E-M. Rock and roll! Yeah, I mean, people are talking about... They've, they've stopped talking about World War Three. It's just around the corner, and now, they've, uh, they're, now they're talking about it's the end of the world as we know it. Because George Blooming Galloway got 16% of the electorate's vote. He's only going to be there for, uh, what, about six months or so? That is assuming that the next election is not cancelled for our safety. Because I would not be surprised if at some point they said, well, we're rubbing up against uh, the uh, American election, so I'm uh, afraid we're going to have to cancel it for your safety. <laughs> They'll have vans coming up the road saying... Emergency, everybody to get from street. Emergency, everybody to get from street. Joanne says there, is one, there was one caller on Ali show earlier. Who, see, it ain't just me, it's the people that write in. Nobody bothers to check what they write anymore before they hit send. Hey, sheeple, wake up. Joanne says, there was one caller on Ali show earlier who said that his father taught him one major life lesson in life. Le major lesson, see, that was my screw-up, not hers. Which was, when you are at a voting age, go to vote, because if you don't vote, you let the party that shouldn't have risen rise to, to be in power, to be in number 10, as in Monster Raving Looney Party. They won? Well, they'll be very upset, because they were going for zero votes. If you don't vote, you will let the party that shouldn't have risen rise to be in power. Well, that's just a fact. Well put, Joanne. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's true. It's the same with Brexit. Oh, no, I've said the Brexit word. It's the same with... Mm -mm. The people who were not that bothered about the way things were going, they weren't single-issue obsessives, they thought, well, I'll vote tomorrow. I'll do it later. I'm not that bothered. Uh, but everybody that was a single-issue obsessive, who, who believed all of those uh, lies about it, uh, you know, bringing um, uh, you know, health, wealth and happiness to uh, hither, thither and yon, 100% of those people went out and voted, and that's uh, why we are where we are. Damn it. Damn it. It's very, very, very important. And people must stop saying, oh, I'm not going to vote because they're all the same. They're not. I'll prove that they're not. I keep, ca I keep carrying this thing around. This is not my work, but somebody posted this on uh, Twitter. Y you know, um, <laughs> Tichy Suit Size keeps going on about his, his plan. We have a plan. Plan, plan, plan and plan, plan and plan, plan. Or you just go back to square one. That's yeah, yeah, let's go back to square one. When we could swim in the sea, when we had dental care, when we could afford our mortgages, when we had no cost of living crisis, when we had pay rises, when we could protest, when we had freedom of movement, when we could see our doctor in person, when we had libraries and frictionless trade with the European Union, when we could report a crime, when there were no queues at the borders. Let's go up to square one. <laughs> I haven't heard him say that in a little while, so maybe they're um, thinking that they'd better think it out again. <laughs> I haven't heard him uh, dribble on about his plan in a little while. Can't wait to hear what that plan is. I mean, and just as soon as they think of one, I'm sure they'll let us know. Sam Tex, who's the leader of the Respect Party? Aretha Franklin. Yeah, R-P-S-E-T-P-C. <phone rings> Respect. Tristan says, I had, how many of these have I got? Oh, you're kidding. I'll never get through these. Oh, we haven't even, oh these, are, these are today's already coming in. Good grief. How do these people get my number? Chris says, unelected a PM asks an unelected head of state to allow an unelected David Cameron into an unelected House of Lords to be in charge of foreign policy, then has the cheek to tell us democracy is under threat. He's like a cross between 1984 and a carry-on film. Yeah, one of the uh, later unfunny carry-on films. And Rahul says, I'm watching Rishi's speech about tolerance, etc. And Vanessa Feltz is giving a running commentary saying it's the best thing she's heard and wants to stand up and give a standing ovation. I rest my face, as you would say. <laughs> Vanessa Feltz? <laughs> what were you watching it on? <laughs> uh, there's so much to uh, talk about and uh, so little time in which to do it. So, should we start with uh, Leanderthal? He was reportedly greeted with a standing ovation no! when he was um, uh, when he arrived at a conservative fundraiser, despite currently being suspended as a Tory MP. Are these the extremists that Titchy Suitsize is talking about? No, I I don't recall. He doesn't recall that. The exclusive. Di oh, I can only dream of being invited to an exclusive dinner. Can you imagine? The exclusive dinner was supposedly put on to raise money for Bassett Law MP Brendan Clark Smith, his re-election campaign, and promised Liz Truss as the, as the guest of honour. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. How far down the list did they have to go before they uh, got somebody that said, yeah, all right, I'll come? All the way down to uh, the Liz bot. Yet the appearance by the former Tory deputy chairman is said to have been given a standing ovation by those in attendance, with Trust allegedly saying, who is this de-whipped Tory, as she greeted him? But, you know, in fairness, it might not have been an attempt at a joke. She just might not have recognised him. She seems perpetually befuddled, opening and closing her mouth like a stunned mullet. In January, Lee Anderthal and Brendan Clark Smith dramatically resigned from their party roles in revolt against Rishi Sunak's Rwanda bill. Oh, no. Was it because it was uh, going to cost over a million pounds each to send some damp unfortunate to Rwanda just to appease the worst among us with some casual nastiness? No. Was it because it wasn't nasty enough? Yes. Yeah. And the Labour Party has urged Prime Minister Titchy Suitsize to ban Lee Anderson from raising funds for the Tories while he is without the party whip. And the Tories heard that and said... 
<laughs> yeah, ban someone from raising money for them. Funny. Silly Sunak. It's all about the money, honey. An Ashfield MP, Lee Anderthal, was stripped of the Tory whip last weekend when he accused Sadiq Khan, the Labour Mayor of London, of being controlled by aliens from space and being a lizard in disguise or something. Anderson has refused to apologise for the remarks uh, uh, that he uh, says that um, uh, he ain't going to do it. He says uh, he likes what he says and he says what he blooming well likes. He said, and anyone who says otherwise can come out into the car park and we'll settle it like morons. When asked about it, uh, Tishy Sunak labelled his remarks as wrong. And when asked to elaborate, he said they were wrong. And asked if he could think of another word to describe them, he said that they were wrong. Stuck in a groove like the needle in my old copy of Dark Side of the Moon. Rock and roll! And according to The Express, Friday's event in Bassett Law, if indeed there is such a place, with Liz the Blunder Trust, was designed to raise money towards uh, Mr. Clark Smith's re-election campaign, a head of a general election expected this year. Assuming it isn't cancelled for our safety. But as he won the seat for the Tories with 55% of the vote, double the next highest score, which was for Labour, it hardly seems necessary. He's going to win that easily. I mean, what could possibly overturn a 14,000 vote majority? This government... Oh, well, that is a good point, yeah. He's going to need all the money he can get. And how is Liz Truss going to entertain the crowd and bring in the money, by the way? I mean, she couldn't talk about her brief tenure in number 10 in 2022 before her mini-budget helped send the economy tumbling, leading her to being ousted after just 44 days in office. In other news, she was going to talk about her brief tenure in number 10 in 2022 before her mini-budget helped send the economy tumbling, leading her to be ousted after just 44 days in office. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Liz, how was that going to help? I'm genuinely unclear. Labour has previously called for Trust to have the Tory whip removed after her attendance at the right-wing Conservative Political Action Conference in the US, where she hobnobbed with cranks and loons and oily charlatans, and some were good people, I suppose. And just to fit in with the dinglings, when she was there last month, she claimed her efforts to cut taxes were sabotaged by the deep state. I'll sum that argument up for you. <laughs> and then in the most tinnied speech I've heard in a long time, Tishy Sunak addressed the nation from beneath the Downing Street lectern and warned that extremist forces in Britain were trying to tear us apart somehow neglecting to recall that he and his party have turned what was a well-ordered nation into the catastrophic clown show that it has become by 14 years of misrule during which they have stripped the country for parts and locked up dissenting voices and rewarded their chums with vast amounts of what used to be our money and presided over the ruination of the British people's welfare to the point that life expectancy has gone down which is a first and we've seen the return of Dickensian diseases and malnutrition, if you please. And then he said that the police should crack down on anyone who didn't like it. And if they did, he would have their back. Forgetting that he's the Prime Minister of Britain and not Russia. And it's all perfectly normal in a well-run country. <laughs> This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. What these places goes on inside that head of yours? Chris Tex, never mind the weather forecast for Glasgow. Can we get a queue waiting time update on the Willy Wonka exhibit? It looks like Donny got some hours moonlighting there too. Don't be rude. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with his face these days, by the way? I mean, he used to be orange. Now he's a sort of, um, well, I don't really know what it is. It's like he's put his face in a British river. Disgusting. It's, um, it seems to be falling off him. It's so thick on his face. And I don't know what colour it is. He seems to have changed the colour of his makeup. Kind of weird that uh, the uh, Americans, you know, his, uh, his fans, those people are so enamoured of a, a man uh, who walks around in a cloud of hairspray and so much makeup you can barely see him. What's that about? And, and comes on stage dancing to um, YMCA by the village people. I mean, <laughs> it's like he's trying to send you a message. <laughs> but his, I, I don't know what's going on. Maybe he's changed his uh, makeup artist. 
It looks like Picasso is doing his makeup at the moment. Just something very, very strange going on there with Donald Trump. Maybe it's so thick that it's, it's actually holding him up, perhaps. It's keeping his brain from leaking out of his ears, maybe. I don't know. But whatever it is, we're all in great danger. <laughs> John says, don't be negative about skier. It makes for a delicious, nutritious breakfast as, and is an excellent source of protein. Yeah, that's S-K-Y-R. That's a yogurt, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Skier. Sky, skier. Skier. Anyway, we must stop giving people their titles. Okay, so they got a title, but nobody calls uh, me Mr. Nick, do they? Why do we have to say Sir Kier? It's just silly. This country's become a silly country. Oh, God, is that the only call that I've got so far? He wants to talk about the Middle East. Oh, come on, people. Where is everybody? I don't think I can. Oh, how serious is it on a scale of 1 to 10? Relatively serious. <laughs> Put him on hold. Alex says, are you looking forward to another year of rich people driving in a circle? How boring do you have to... How boring does your life have to be to find Formula One exciting? Very <laughs> rich people driving in a circle. Yeah, I completely agree in every way, shape and form. Boring! Although I did see a video the other day of somebody with a drone which can keep up with one of them cars. And it did give you a whole new perspective. Uh, that does sound like a great way forward in that whole uh, Formula One coverage on TV thing. I know I didn't put that very well, but you know what I mean. Just rearrange those words into something that makes sense in English. That would be a great step forward in the coverage of that sport, he said, waggling his fingers in the air to denote inverted commas, that sport on television. If you can have a drone that's hovering above the car, because it just made it much more exciting, even though it was the car that was just doing a lap on its own in the rain, but with having a drone above it, uh, it uh, ev even I uh, was uh, momentarily interested until a raindrop fell down uh, the, uh, the window in my house and uh, I was uh, distracted by that instead. Here they are now. You see, all I have to do is just nudge them and uh, they uh, come crawling uh, out of the corner. But I don't want to take their calls anymore. Alex says, yes, I'm guilty of being a serial... Oh, here we go. See? I'm guilty of being a serial non-phoner. I'm so sorry that I screwed up. In my defense, I'm an outlier. I'd love to talk, but I haven't made a phone call since I left my job in the call center of a well-known gas company's complaints department in 1999. I was subsequently... <laughs> I was subsequently diagnosed with PTSD. Sorry for my whinging and whining and moaning. Stop whining. Yeah. Well, that would make me not want to pick up the phone again. I did that very, very briefly. Cold calling people back in the days when there was a thing called the Yellow Pages. Hey, kids, you won't believe it. We used to get a, a book uh, the size of a house brick. And um, by that method, we used to look up people's phone numbers. Can you believe that? No. And people like me, uh, I, I was sat in an office on the top floor of a building just opposite Buckingham Palace, from which, from the roof of which, which we shouldn't have been on, but, you know, at lunchtime we went up there and uh, had a beverage. Booze. And we peered into uh, Her Majesty's Garden. You believe that? It's actually very, very difficult to see in because they have foliage everywhere. And, uh, you know, they, they've got a blooming forest in there. But, um, yeah, picking up the phone, oh, it's just so painful. Cold calling people, trying to get them to advertise in the yellow pages. It was excruciating. Because you, you talk to somebody and they just slam the phone down or tell you to get lost or send you away with a, uh, uh, you know, they metaphorically flick your ear. And you just did not want to pick the phone up again to call the next person. Because you, you, you become... Um, I, I, don't, it, PT, I get that PTSD thing completely because you just become fearful of, of somebody answering the phone to you. You just hope it's going to ring and ring and ring and then it rings off and then you can tick that, that, that you've done that number and it goes down on your permanent record. Yeah, so I get that. Uh, Chrissy texts, uh, he says he wears a hat because of scars from an attack. Wow, that, that was almost like... Um, 
uh, one of them uh, Japanese poems. What are they called? He says he wears a hat because of scars from an attack. Wow, somebody should write a song around that. He used to wear a hat, though. Mark says, George Galloway MP wears a hat. Of, oh, that, that came in quick, didn't it? George Galloway MP. He wears a hat after having his jaw broken and being badly injured in a physical attack when he was a serving MP in 2015. Uh, Danny says, yes, Frank Sinatra had a good voice. I was talking about this. I saw a, a concert of Frank Sinatra. It was on uh, the, the... You know the other channel? The... You know the... Yeah, that's them. Well, on uh, on their TV um, catch-up thing, they have Frank Sinatra doing a gig. It was either the Royal Albert Hall or the Royal Festival Hall. One of them Royal Halls. And, uh, wow, talk about sensational. He got introduced by, um, uh, um, you know, Princess Grace of Monaco, whatever her name is. That is her name, Princess Grace of Monaco. And she just went on and on and on. It's like, oh, dear, shut up. No one's here to listen to you. Just go on with your silly, boring story. And then Frank came out and... Um, it's this diminutive man who didn't, didn't really look like very much at all. I mean, he's got a nice suit on uh, right enough. But uh, then he opens his mouth and this, uh, this noise pours out. And he just gets better and better and better as the gig goes on. And it's only about half an hour, but I'm telling you, if you have half an hour to spare and you wish to be amused, then uh, I would uh, watch it straight, not now, but uh, soon, if not sooner, because it's uh, bound not to be there forever. Sen blooming sensational. Look at this now. I've got um, every uh, thing lit up on the board, and um, I haven't. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't think I've got the time to talk to them uh, at the moment. Martin says, just trying the WhatsApp as a test. If you read this out, it will prove that we found one thing in this country that works. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Well, that's the thing with texts is that the, they don't fade in and out. That they, they arrive as one, regardless of the quality of the signal that it's sent on. Whereas phone calls, most of the phone calls that I get from people in this country, apart, apart from the ones that, have, uh, you know, apart from the 110-year-old the people that have still got landlines, apart from them, it, everyone sounds like they're talking to me from the International Space Station. Whereas if I get a mobile phone call from the other side of the world, it'll come through clear as a bell. <laughs> Nothing works in this country anymore. Don't make me throw that out as a topic again. What works now that didn't used to work uh, 14 years ago? What is better about this country now than it was before the, uh, the regime took over, before we started to be run by... This government. Exactly. No one can think of a single solitary thing. I'm determined to get through these texts from yesterday and then I can start the uh, 86,000 pages of text that I've already got from... God, look at them all. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining or anything. Whinging and whining and moaning. Dot says, my mum was 21 again yesterday. He's talking about the leap year. And I think I'm right about that. If, you, if your birthday's on the leap year day then you can't have your birthday on the 28th because that's the day before your birthday. So you have to have it on the, 29th, on the 1st of March because that is the point at which we are, we arrive, this planet arrives in the point in space which donates your birthday. I'm right about that. So, because, you know, we, uh, the sun goes around us and uh, we go around the moon and when it all uh, c conjoins in uh, one blob, then uh, that is um, uh, spring yuletide. I hope you're writing this down, kids. Simon says, uh, obscure reference, but if Starmer loses the next election, he will be the Devon Locke of politics. One for the teenagers there. Well, you're not a teenager, but what does that mean? I don't know. I'm too old. How old are you? 39. I'm not on 27. <laughs> <laughs> You're 20 what? 7. 27. Well, that's nearly a teenager from where I'm looking. Devon Locke. Well, I'm going to have to look that up on the World Wide Wait. Oh, he's got his hands in the air, waving, uh, waving his arms like he just don't care. I yes? do know, actually. So what is it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a horse a from the horse? 1920s who raced in the Grand National 
and fell at the last leg. Oh. And I think maybe he actually died, although I might be wrong. Oh. About it's fine, it's 100 years ago. You can't lie about a dead horse. <laughs> 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 uh, you can't flog one either, as a matter of fact. But that's a different issue entirely. This is LBC with Nick Abbott. Call 0345 6060 973. Tweet at LBC. Text 84850. So they opened their big mouths and out came talk. Talk, talk. Now, just because he's been waiting the longest, I'll take uh, this call, but probably not for very long. Richmond, hello, Gorgas. Hi. Yes, Gorgas. Nick, can you hear me? No. Yes, of course you can. Uh, this is the second time I'm calling LBC. Second time? The, yeah, the second time. Right. The first time I called, it was with Nick, Nick the other one, Nick Ferrari. Nick the other one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the other How one. How did that go? Uh, it didn't go very well because he was... <laughs> it didn't go very uh, well. You know, right. because he was... Uh, uh, I Are you being strangled? From Iraq. I originally come from Iraq. You usually and come from was, Iraq. Is was, that what you just said? He was premature. He was. He was actually. Uh, what can I say to you, Nick? I don't know. I I always listen to you at night, and I always enjoy your show. Thanks. But Nick, but. the other one, uh -oh. is, uh, I, I think he's got a problem. I think he's got a problem. But I, uh, anyway, I'm not, I'm not sure that he has a problem. I I think that Nick Ferrari is our leader for a very good reason. It's because he's he's yeah, excellent at he's everything. Leader. He's not my leader anyway. To put this to put the, to put that thing aside anyway, yes. in regards to the Iraq, Iraq war, which was a big mistake anyway, mm -hmm. and we suffered as Iraqi people. I am a, I'm an Iraqi. Yeah, you said and that. I, and I and I suffered. And I suffered. I lost three people of my family. Anyway, to put that aside, which which many people don't actually even what's happening in Gaza. Can people I, dying uh, every yeah, day. Okay, all right. Can uh, I uh, can I ask okay, you to okay. uh, can I ask you what is the purpose of this call? The purpose of this call is uh, I love your show. Okay, that's great. I'm, <laughs> I'm pleased to hear it. Thank you. Appreciate it, Gorgas. Just wanted to say he loves me. He just called to say he loves me. Rock and roll! Thanks, Gorgas. Appreciate it. <sighs> um, Dan says, Fishy's speech makes perfect sense. It's just the right spicy word salad you need just before cancelling elections for your own safety. <laughs> for your own safety. <laughs> yeah, he's going to cancel elections for his own safety. <laughs> yeah, correct the mundo. Gordon texts, have you ever thought about a job in management consultancy, Nick, given your brilliant workplace analysis? No. I don't think I'm cut out for management. I know my place. I'm determined to get through yesterday's uh, emails. Just three to go. Dawn says, there is a petition you can sign to try and get those stupid bright lights made illegal. We were talking about those bright lights on the cars, the LED ones on the cars that uh, shape like tanks. Huge, stupidly big cars. Uh, the lights are up too high, so it shines right in your eyes, rendering you, uh, you know, momentarily blind, which is not a great step forward in road safety. She says, I've ended up in a hedge more than once when I've been blinded by a 4x4 coming toward me on a country lane. They are dangerous. Yes, mostly dawn because they're driven by morons. The amount of uh, times I've been down... I hate driving on country lanes. Hate it, hate it, hate it. Because the people who are locals i mean i do the uh, the, the speed that the late, that the conditions deserve which on a country lane is about 20 mile an hour you know it'd be one lane occasionally there'll be little passing uh, lay by type things not not lay by as such but just a little way where you can pass and um and it's windy 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 and the, the locals they I don't know if there's something that about living in the country that uh, makes you go do lally, but they drive at the speed of light, assuming that because the last time they went around a blind corner there wasn't anybody there, that there will never be anybody there. Why do they do that? I mean, just because it says that the, uh, the, the speed limit is now 60 mile an hour doesn't mean to say you've got to do 60. If it's pouring down with rain and, you, and it's, um, uh, it's, you know, it's dark and you can't see around a corner and they just blast along like they're um, playing a video game.
morons, Dawn. We're surrounded by morons, and they're all coming in the opposite direction. And John says, I work with Ray Harryhausen. We were talking about Ray Harryhausen, you know, the guy that did um, uh, Jason, of the, Jason uh, and the Argonauts. The old, um, uh, you know, uh, special effects. Late last night we were talking about this, and I had somebody on the phone who was a um, who was the keeper of the Ray Harryhausen collection, or something of that order. And John says, "I work with Ray Harryhausen, and was privileged to have him as a friend. I must call you up sometime with my mouth and bore you to tears." And Daryl says, "Ray Harryhausen was too young to have worked on the original King Kong, but he did work on a similar movie." Uh, called Mighty Joe Young. Well, wasn't that Brad Pitt? Or was that s something else? It couldn't have been. Ray Harryhausen, Mighty Joe Young. Isn't that where uh, Brad Pitt becomes younger or something? Or he's um, uh, the head of a baseball team or something like that. It probably is. I, I would just uh, assume that that is factually correct and move on. 0345 Lewisham. Lewisham, hello Valerie. Valerie. You were talking to a 110-year-old uh, on a landline. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's, I'm glad you've come up with the uh, movie memorabilia stuff, because that's what I'm phoning you about. Uh, Just around the corner from me uh, last year, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang broke down. Really? Yeah. I, act I know you hate... Um, Twitter, but I, I did tweet you a photograph of it. I knew you wouldn't have looked at it, so no, I thought I I'd didn't. phone you up now. So but who was driving it? Just... Sorry? Who was driving it? The owner. Uh, apparently they had six in the movie, oh, really? and this was one of the originals, and he takes it out to functions, he, but he had a load of kids in it, and so he couldn't take the toolbox, and when it broke down, he had to uh, call home for the toolbox, and this van arrived with it painted on the side um, <laughs> to get it going again. <laughs> really? Um, chitty you, chitty pretty chitty bang bang. <laughs> Sing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. We'll uh, let you know. <laughs> Incidentally, yes. a couple of weeks ago, I was behind Nick Ferrari in the supermarket queue. Really? Which is a bit of a surprise. Huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> So you've never been behind him in the I supermarket I have never queue. been behind Nick Ferrari in a supermarket queue. No. There you go. Did he Got one over on you? Did he um, do a runner? <laughs> <laughs> he almost did actually because one of his items had fallen over the divider and oh. got rung up as my first item. <gasps> no. Um, so I had to sort of go to the end of, of the um, till and call. Excuse me. Security. Me. Yeah. Call Five security. And, cheese, yeah. And, and he had to come back and, and pay for it. Right. Well, that is, the, said, that is the line that must not be crossed. I mean, you could, you could <laughs> probably solve uh, international disputes just by having one of those plastic things that you put on well, uh, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, between the countries. Nobody would ever cross that line, no. No, well, I'm afraid he did. No, but I, I couldn't resist. I said to him, well, if you're not Nick Ferrari, I don't know who is. And he <laughs> said, I'm Nick Ferrari, and shook my hand. <laughs> huh. And then did he go to the news? <laughs> 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 no, he, he paid for the cheese and paid made his escape. Paid for the cheese and made his escape. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Valerie. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Here is a Guardian report on the Devon lock from 1956. My glamorous assistant has just posted this through. Uh, this article is more than 67 years old. <laughs> what? <laughs> You know, it says on the Guardian... I, I wish they just put dates on it. It's very annoying when newspaper uh, websites say, uh, you know, this article is five hours old. Just put the blooming date on it. This article is three days old. Yeah, but just what date was it? It says this article is more than 67 years old. What? I've never seen that before. And um, it's too long to read. It's like one of those long reads. I'll read you the first part. I'll, I'll read you the first part of the first part. None of the thousands who saw it will easily shake off the memory of Devon Locke's collapse in front of the Royal Box today, within 40 yards and a few seconds of triumph, or the utterly poignant spectacle of the Royal Jockey, R. Francis, cast as the day's tragic hero, walking away from his crippled mount, too distressed to look anywhere. What happened to the horse? <laughs> Is it too soon to say that? This happened in uh, 1908. Is that right? No. 
19 something or other. I don't know. They haven't put a date on that either. Never mind. Uh, nobody actually cares. That's the most important part that you should remember. Nobody cares. Um, well, what else? Martin text, do you wear a dry robe? What does that mean? Do I wear a dry robe? What does that mean? Well, let's read on. It might become clear. He says, it's the barber jacket on the 2020s. No, no clearer. He says, they're supposed to be used by wild swimmers, but have been seen worn 60 miles from the coast. Oh, and a pair of Crocs must be worn along with them. Do you have any idea what that's about? Yeah, so dry robes are things that are often worn, like they said, by outdoor swimmers to keep them and all of their clothes dry after they've come out. It's a really good way of warming up after you've been out swimming. I have no idea why he's texted it to you. But a dry robe, is that just a bath robe? Like no, a I'll, I'll dressing put a picture gown. on your screen now. Oh, do you have to? No. <laughs> 0345. 6060973. He's at the end of his tether with me. I've crossed the line. Okay, here's a, uh, here's a dry robe. Let's see how much they cost. So it's, um... Oh, God, this is getting so annoying. The, do you agree uh, to uh, have cookies on your machine, or would you like to see the options? I'd like to see the options, please. What's the wine of the day? You can give information uh, action to indicate that we can use... You can give affirmative action to indicate that we can use your data for this purpose. I do not accept that you can have uh, my data for whatever purpose. I reject all. I'm pressing it, I'm pressing it, pressing it. Nothing's happening. Oh, save and exit. Oh, what sweet relief. So it's like, um... It's sort of a combination of a, a jacket that's long with a a fleecy inside. I'd never heard of such a thing. It's a dry robe. Do you have to wear anything underneath? Disgusting. Probably a couple of things underneath. At least. It's a... Uh, uh, it's £299. What? <laughs> I think I'll stay wet. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. You're joking. 0345 6060 973. Kensington, Jennifer. Hello, Nick. Yes, At Jennifer. Last, I've been hanging on for 20 minutes. Finally. Whinging and whining and minutes, moaning. Stop whining. Yes. I haven't spoken to you for a long time. Wow, well, haven't I been lucky? Every Friday and Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I'm calling on my landline. Ah. Oh. And I want to say I love my landline. I will never give it up. I've had a landline with a big network since 1981. Oh, yes. And it's so reliable, it never breaks down. Yeah. I've always got a clear line. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to my younger sister for four hours on Wednesday evening this week. And it didn't radiate your brain because that, uh, that's not what landline phones do. No, well, the thing is, I've got one that you can hold as you walk around and you oh. don't need to put it to your ear. Right. So I have it in front of my face, but it's not up against my mouth. It's your beautiful face, Jennifer. Anyway, we were on the phone for four hours and uh, she said to me, I will never give up my landline, she says, because it's really the only way that we can stay in touch because I have to pay for phone calls and texts on my mobile because it's not a smartphone, it's a basic one. Mm -hmm. And I heard on LBC last night that all the mobile networks are putting the prices up again in April this year. Again? Yeah, they're going up again. And I'm with Vodafone, so of course I have to go and check tomorrow. Yeah, um, without, mentioning any, shop without, without, without mentioning any brand names. Vodafone, you say? Contract is yes. going up mm -hmm. by. Right. Um, but I don't make many calls on my la on my mobile because it's not a clear line. No, they're and terrible. I have terrible problems understanding what the other person is saying to me. <laughs> even if I've got it on loudspeaker, so a lot of the time I say, "Can you put the phone down? Bring me back on the landline." Yes. And it's so much clearer. Exactly. Yeah. You and know that uh, you know that if you speak to somebody over an hour, they, use, they start to charge you. You got to put the phone down and then ring them back again. Well, actually, I'm very lucky because with the network that I'm with for the last, what, three or four years, I get free phone calls up to an hour 
to any UK landline number. Yeah. And then you have to put the phone down and ring them back. So you can't talk for four hours. Well, my sister phoned me back home in Guernsey, and she was on the phone for four hours. But in Guernsey, because it's not part of the UK, they have a different network. Oh, of, different, right. So she doesn't need to put the phone down after 55 minutes and then ring me back like I would if I was ringing her. Um, she just can stay on the phone for as long as she likes. Yeah. So she phoned me at 8 o'clock See, in the evening and we came off the phone about five midnight. minutes to midnight. Right. Um, so um, and what did great. you talk about for four hours straight? Can you can you remember anything that you discussed? Yes, we can because oh. she was diagnosed just last week. Yeah, with I, I knew. I knew I shouldn't have asked. <laughs> so she was going into great great detail. About right. That. Okay. Well, please to spare us the detail. No, I'm not going to give you the details. Thanks. But it was a very special call because. I'm actually going home on my 75th birthday. 75 years old. At the end of this month. And I'm actually only going to be there for about five hours. But it's worth the money because we haven't seen each other since 2015. Five hours? What are you, on the run? <laughs> well, unfortunately, the last flight out of Guernsey back to Gatwick is at 6.10 in the evening. Right. And I'm actually going out at 11.05 in the morning and I arrive at 12.30 lunchtime, mm. so we'll have about four and a half, maybe five hours together and then well, I'll be coming back I, again. I, yeah, I understand the uh, complete... I wouldn't want to spend the night in Guernsey either. Just get well, out no, of there as soon as possible. Because... Come back to uh, civilization, uh, Jennifer, as soon as you can. No, it's just... You know, it's my 75th birthday yeah. and it's going to be a special time for both of us. Because in 2015, when I went last, when I last went back home, it's when our dad was ill and he passed away. So this time, it's going to be a really special time for both of us. Right. Well, I bet um, refreshments will be involved. Booze, perhaps. I don't drink. Like I said, tea. And I don't smoke. <laughs> oh, go on. You yeah, go on, Jennifer. Try it. You might like it. I used to, but I gave it up. Gave I actually it up. was reading right. in the Metro yesterday. That cigarettes are going up to sixteen pounds a packet. What? Sixteen pounds a the packet. Metro yesterday. That is stunning. You know, when I was at school, we used to be able to buy them in singles. Well, we never we weren't able to buy them in singles back home in Guernsey, but we were able to buy them in packs of five. Yeah, I bet they were still on uh, snuff in Guernsey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jennifer, I wish you all the best and uh, happy landings. Uh, OK, thanks a lot. Cheers, my dear. 0345 6060 973. Yeah, we used to buy them in singles down the, uh, down the back of our school. In our school uniforms, we'd walk into the shop there and you'd have a tray. You'd open up a packet of fags and he'd put them in a tray and sold them to us as singles. <laughs> that was the 1970s, kids. Can you believe that? No. 0345 6060 973. Let's see now who's been waiting the longest. New Malden, Ahmed. Oh, hello, Nick. Yes, yes sir. Uh, two sort of serious issues oh, today, tonight. no. Not too serious, but the first one is on a lighter note. Mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump. Yes. He keeps winning all the primaries in the USA. I wonder if they will wake, uh, uh, wake up, jo uh, well, Sleepy Joe, I think. What? Sleepy Joe. Will it wake up Sleepy Joe that... Uh, Trump keep winning all the primaries in uh, wherever he goes. Yeah. He wins it. Well, he doesn't have any uh, major competition. Of course he's going to win. I mean, he's pretty much the only person on the ballot that anybody's going to vote for. He's, uh, you know, he is the Republican nomination, nominee. Well, indeed, indeed. I think all the bad publicity seem to be giving him... Uh, yeah. Oh, they love it. Yeah. All of his, uh, uh, all of his big fans... <laughs> The Dingalings, they absolutely love it. They, um, they, they seem to think that it's a badge of honour to be, um, to, to be a, a crook. <laughs> well, I suppose they'll have to have a, a, a collection for him because he has to pay about well, four hundred sixty-five million. dollars Are you kidding? I make $400 million a year, so what difference does it make? He doesn't care. He makes $400 million a year. Uh, a year yeah, sure yeah. he does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, on a more serious note. More serious I than that? Yeah, this is serious. This one is about uh, Gaza. Oh. And of course, um, it is disgraceful that uh, America is now uh, airdropping uh, food there. 
and at the same time they're supplying lethal weapons. <laughs> uh, uh, so the killing, uh, you know, uh, premeditated murder uh, continues. So yes, you would think that, uh, that holding both positions at the same time would create a noise inside the brain. <laughs> Well, that, that would create some so. sort of dichotomy going on there, but uh, they well, appear to be okay with it. Well, I think if America wish, wishes, they can stop this at a stroke. But they are not. They, they are not going to do it, uh, which is ridiculous, because uh, the rest of the world can uh, 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 scream blue murder, and mm. I don't think anything will change. Right. It's up to America. They need to stop it. Yes. This, uh, Can I know, just this, check? This, this is the serious part of this conversation. Well, sort of. Yeah. I'm not going to... Yeah, it, it's not going to get more serious than this, is it? No, no, no. We're I'm not, not going, going to start to... talking about suicide or cancer or something, are we? Uh, <laughs> well... You haven't, got, really. you haven't got abortion penciled in for the rest of this conversation, have you? Uh, not at the moment. Not at, not the, at the moment. moment. Okay, glad to hear it. No. Excellent work. Thanks a lot, Ahmed. 0345 6060 this uh, text says, apparently you do not need to put down most landlines after an hour to avoid getting charged these days. Wow, we really have uh, come far, ain't we? By the way, that, uh, that nice lady that I was talking to on her landline, it wasn't that clear, was it? If she told me that she was talking to me on a mobile phone, I would have believed her. Not that great. And I think that landlines are going to be taken away from you, whether you like it or not. They're all going to go uh, Wi-Fi now, baby. That's the future. <laughs> It doesn't seem to make sense to me. They're, they're giving you Wi-Fi, which, of course, if you have an electrical uh, blackout, which is entirely possible in this country. I mean, they've already, <laughs> they've already um, th well, you could say threatened. They've already warned us that the uh, lights might go out. You remember they did that. And, of course, if the lights go out, then your Wi-Fi goes out. And if your Wi-Fi goes out, your phone goes out if it's attached to it. But that would be, uh, you, you know... <laughs> That would be entirely predictable and uh, would be uh, you know, unsurprising if that indeed happened. I, if I were you, I'd buy uh, a lot of candles and canned goods and seal up your door from the inside. Close the curtains and pretend you're not in. 0345 6060 Text 84850. Email nicka at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at LBC. Hey, did you hear about the Tory dinner they had the other day? That fundraising dinner? Oh, I have detailed files. Don't you worry about that. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Hello, boys. Anger there, Nick. Listen, now, Anger, what I'm trying to say to you is this, Nick, right? Wealthy donors paid £25,000 for a cosy private dinner with Chancellor Jeremy Hunt just days before his budget speech. A Japanese meal with the Chancellor and up to three guests was auctioned off at the Tories' winter party as at Westminster's swanky old war office hotel, which is called Owo. They've written Owo on the outside of the building. As in... Oh, no! <laughs> silliest name for a hotel I've ever heard in my life. I mean, if it was called the old war office hotel, I mean, that's still not a very good name for a hotel, is it? But they haven't. They've shortened it to Owo, which is, I'm sure, what they used to call it during the war. But what kind of a name is that for a hotel? You couldn't get into a cab and say, can you take me to Owo? Terrible. Anyway, I'm sure they know what they're doing. A Japanese meal with the Chancellor and up to, but not including, three guests was auctioned off at the Tories' winter party at Westminster's swanky old war office hotel as Titchy Suit Size rattled his donation tin for Megabucks backers, and a signed photo of the cabinet is understood to have sold for around £115,000. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Who would want that? <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't want to put it out, would you? You wouldn't want to frame it and put it on your piano, for instance. A signed photo of the cabinet. I'd rather have a signed photo of a cabinet. A commode, perhaps. Disgusting. The unnamed winning bidder 
also secured FaceTime with the Prime Minister herself, who will be handing over the photo personally. <laughs> Super rich donors paid up to £15,000 a table for the chance to rub shoulders with senior cabinet ministers. And what sounds crooked about that? Um... The notorious fundraising auction, says the Mirror, sees the Tories sell access to cabinet members for cash. Perfectly normal in a third world country. <coughs> Mr Sunak, Home Secretary James Cleverly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign Secretary David Cameron, Defence Secretary Grant Shapps, or whatever he's calling himself these days, all attended the posh party arriving by government limousine, despite their offices being around five minutes' walk away. We're paying for it, in other words. Culture Secretary Lucy Fraser, Health Secretary Victoria Atkins, Chief Whip Simon Hart, and Science Minister Michelle Donnellan were all seen arriving on foot. And Susan Hall, the Tory candidate for the Mayor of London, was also there. Wow, it's like, like the Hammer House of Horrors film, but with fewer virgins. Available for bidding was a day's clay pigeon shooting with the Home Secretary, James Cleverly. I would uh, maintain a ducked position at all times. I, I don't mean not that kind of duck. <laughs> you can have uh, tickets to a Liverpool football game with Education uh, Secretary Gillian Keegan or a night out at a West End show with Culture Secretary Lucy Fraser. You can also bid for all of those things without having to be accompanied by a Tory minister, but that's extra. Luxury getaways were also on the block with lots including a party villa in the Turks and Caicos donated by a Lebanese cannabis entrepreneur who has been branded the Wolf of Wall Street. Want to score some pot? Or it could be a lesbian cannabis entrepreneur, but I'm not entirely sure. Also among the wealthy donors attending the party were Lubov Chernurkin, the biggest female political donor in history. How big is she? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that just slipped out. I had no idea I was going to say that. Her husband, Vladimir, previously served as the Deputy Finance Minister of Russia under the rule of Vladimir Putin. Nothing to see here, please move along, or it's the rest of your short life in an Arctic gulag for you, comrade. Donors attending the uh, lavish soiree. Oh, I can only dream of going to a lavish soiree. Donors attending the lavish soiree on uh, Thursday were treated to a Laurent Perrier champagne on arrival. They were served a 2022 Domaine Roger Champeau Sancerre Les Pierre white wine worth £27.50 a bottle, and a 2021 Voyager Estate Cabernet Sauvignon worth the £23 a bottle over dinner. Booze. The meal opened with rainbow trout with a squid ink emulsion and babies, or Yorkshire celeriac with vegetarians. They tucked into a main course of Hereford beef and octail served with creamed slaves, herb-crusted king oyster mushrooms with fondant plebeians, and the vegan option was to get out, you woke lefty. And the meal was topped off with a chocolate pudding with whipped greed and a fondant of disregard for the rest of the country, peering in the window while starving to death. Sounds lovely. 0345 East Yorkshire. Hello, Mike. Hi, Nick. Yeah, um, talking about the fundraising bit, I don't know, did you pick up a few months ago that the Tories altered the rules for how much a party can spend on an election. And it used to be about 17 or 18 million that the Labour Party could never get to anyway. Mm. But the Tories doubled it to 35 million a few yeah. months ago. That's just gerrymandering again. And it's worse than that, but they're allowing people who don't even bloody well live here to pour as much money as they like into our political system. It's also very much... What would Donald Trump do? Oh, shut up! Exactly. Now, I'm glad you brought me on to that, because um, I watched a couple of Trump, late, not all the way through, but a couple of his latest speaking things. And, <laughs> OK, this dribbled rib me out of his mouth, but I looked at, at the platform, and behind the platform, obviously strategically positioned, were a load of banners, yeah. which were Hispanics for Trump. 
Nicaraguans for Trump, <laughs> Venezuelans for Trump, Mexicans for Trump. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, all these murderers and rapists building these banners it for us. <laughs> quite, quite unbelievable. But then I think from that. Mike, it, Mike, Mike, I, I heard that some of them were good people, I suppose. <laughs> So I jumped from that with what would Donald Trump do, and I'd got a vision of Cruella on a platform giving a speech with people with banners behind the thing, but people for Cruella, immigrants for Cruella, yeah. asylum seekers for Cruella. Mm. <laughs> and I thought, if that's what Donald Trump would do, how long is it before we get this sort of stuff? Yeah, yeah. Dalmatians for Cruella, yeah. <laughs> just talking about headlights then and what have you when, at, last year I had to go and get a light from Halfords no, no criticism of them, they're a perfectly good retailer but I went across to the rack and hundreds of different headlight options yeah. for different makes and models mm-hmm. about a quarter of them had a warning above the individual rack saying not legal for road use what? Um, n- yeah seriously not legal for road use and so anyway, I selected the legal one I needed for somebody to replace for somebody. Yeah. Went to the checkout and I said to the guy, how many of those illegal ones do you sell? And he said, oh, loads. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> okay, but it's legal for them to tell them, but they're for, in theory, they're for, like, combines and excavators and things. Oh, yeah, that's but what people said, are using them for, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, yeah, we sell loads of them. And I thought, are people idiots? Because you blind someone, they're liable to hit you. Well, Why yes. Do people do such stupid things. Well, I'm stunned. I had no idea. So that's the reason why they appear that um, something should be done about them, because something has been done about them, but they're selling them anyway. Yeah, they are clearly labelled, though, to be fair to the company. I mean, um, yeah. Yeah, but uh, even so, I think there would be a way of stopping that, surely. Well, yeah, stopping selling them would be a good idea. Yeah. All right, well spotted there, Mike. Keep your eyes peeled, unless one of those uh, lights is coming towards you, in which case, screw them up really tightly. Thanks a lot, mate. 0345 6060 973. Sam says, I don't think Glasgow is the wettest place anymore. I think Lincolnshire might be beating it, as it seems to rain daily here. You might want to see the weather around Lincoln on your weather check. I most certainly will do nothing of the sort, Sam. Andrew texts, can you please help? Since Brexit happened, I've been absolutely drowning in sovereignty. I've got so much sovereignty, it's coming out of my ears. Do you know if I, uh, I could perhaps use some of the excess sovereignty to make... A st- to maybe stock a local food bank or help a pensioner out with their energy bills? Sorry, uh, Andrew, I screwed that up. <laughs> Better luck next time. 0345 6060 973. Abby Wood. Hello, Mark. Hi there, uh, Nick. I um, mentioned at the beginning of the show uh, an ancient thing called the Yellow Pages. Yes. Anybody under 30 won't know what we're talking about no, now. No, no. Uh, at the time in the 90s, I owned a waste disposal company. And every year. A you waste get the... disposal company? Is that a cute way of saying that you're in the mafia? Absolutely. I can't go into that, Nick. No, it's like, I may, I may classify myself. Yeah. Indeed. Um, uh, so the, every year, the uh, Yellow Pages rep, uh, rep used to come round, and they'd say, oh, we'll meet with the business, and I went, oh, well, no, waste disposal, you can't go in the yard, so they would take us to the local pub. You'd sit down there, have, like, a two-hour lunch, and you'd sign up for, uh, those days, it was a half-page hmm. advert on the Yellow Pages, yeah. which was very expensive. I think it worked out about £2,000. So um, we said, yep, we'll agree to that, but, um, we signed all the paperwork, did everything else, and then had a couple of drinks. And the guy who sold it to us said, pay for your first month, then cancel the direct debit and say you can't afford it, <laughs> and they won't chase you. Because <laughs> it's been printed already. Exactly. <laughs> so we got, we got a three years print, a free, a three years, um, yellow pages advert, but they didn't cut on on. We did that for four years. Wow. This, Which is totally dishonest, and I wouldn't do it. I'll say, days now. yes, this show does not endorse this call. That's exactly what I wanted to say, yeah. Nick. All right, good work. Thanks a lot, Mark. Go, go, go to jail. Go directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect £200. <laughs> Rob says, I heard you talking about Doctor Who yesterday. Very hit and miss overall, but there is one episode that is definitely worth watching. An incredible time loop story called Heaven Sent. You won't regret it. 
Um, I would have phoned you about this, but I didn't want to freak you out, says Rue. Yeah, I'm not going to watch Doctor Who. It's a children's program. If you stop watching that tripe, they'll stop making it. I promise that's true. That's not a controversial thing to say, is it? Uh, Tulse Hill. Hello, D. Oh, hello, Nick. D. How are you? I am great, mate. I haven't spoken... We haven't spoken in such a long time. Really? Been a long time, been a long time, been a long, lonely, 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 lonely time. Rock and roll! There you go, you see? I mean, you have my number. You could have called me. Well, I know, yeah. You never mm. call. <laughs> I'm, I'm not... I'm not complaining or anything. Yeah, this is you not complaining. I understand. No, no, no. I tell you what, I tell you why. One of the reasons I wanted to call was just to say hello to you. Hello. To you know, hello. Yes. Yeah. yes. Hello. Hello. And to let you know that my baby is going to be 21 on Tuesday. Your baby. <laughs> 21. 21. Well, she's my last child, isn't she? Oh, That's well, always, always be baby to you. I know. What about the happy birthday thingy? Oh, oh, she gets a happy birthday because she's 21 years old. There yeah. you go. There you Yay! go. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to get her? Don't tell me. No, I can't tell you that. Can't tell me. You're going to get her I'm something though, her right? Some... Yes, I have got yeah. her something oh, already. right. Where, where have you hidden uh, it? Um, it hasn't arrived yet. She oh. doesn't... Don't... We can't Shh. see it. She might hear me. No, that's right. You're going, you're going to put it. Got one present, though. You, you're going to put it in the. You're going to put it in the wardrobe, right? Whose wardrobe? Mine or hers? Well, it has to be yours. Can't put it in her wardrobe. She might look in there. As soon as it comes yeah, in, you have to yeah. wrap it up and wrap it up in a in a box that's not that that won't give away what's in it. Like if <laughs> it's right. a if it's a tiny tiny thing like a <laughs> like a ring or a computer chip or something. Put it in a shoe box and she'll never guess. It's true. She doesn't look in my shoe boxes. Right. Point. Oh, you're so smart. I hope you've been well, though. I've been listening to you. Yeah, I've been over here, Dee. I know. And and I know that lots of people are really naughty when they call you. Some of them just don't make any sense. <laughs> but anyway, Jeff. Yeah. yeah, that's... I, I don't think that, that counts as naughty. That just, uh, you know, that's that's just normal for uh, oh, this show. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I wish you and, the, uh, you and yours all the best, Dee. Thanks for that. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. I really like you. Do you like me? Yeah, sure. Why not? Oakhampton. Hello, Rose. Oh, hello, Nick. Well, you mentioned Frank Sinatra. Yes. And um, I thought, well, here's my chance. Um, because I just wanted to say something about him, but I've also got a little story, sort of leads from him and then to another singer. Okay. Um, is that okay? Well... It's funny you should have mentioned him because I adored him from the age of twelve, really. When I first were you heard a, his voice. Uh, a Bobby Soxer? I don't even know what a no, Bobby no, Soxer I'm not is. That old. What, what no. is what is a Bobby Soxer? What's a, what I've are Bobby known. socks? I think it's those little socks, those little white socks they wear that come halfway up the calf. I've seen photographs. Right. What? Just like that, socks then? <laughs> yeah. Really, I don't know why they would call that, but that was that was before my time. Hmm. Um, I was I came into it sort of behind, really. Yeah. Because my parents had a record, a very famous one with the Nelson Riddle Band, and I just fell for his voice. It's that um, timbre it's like, of it's the like voice, having, you know? Yeah, it's like having honey poured in your ears. Oh, it's just something. I mean, nobody else has ever touched him, really. And then I saw his smile, and that was it. I've been in love since I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> And the impeccable timing and everything about him. I won't try because you can't do it justice, really. Mm. And the, the way it seems to come direct from him, despite all the artistry. You know, Fly Me to the Moon, when he begins, after the bit of introduction, just the way he puts the word fly, you know, you just go, oh, wow. Yeah, he, he, me, he took a song. <laughs> I, mean, I know this is one of those silly phrases that they use on those no-talent shows, but he took a song, and if he was singing it, it was instantly his. And he yes, just put so much, exactly. so much meaning into the lyrics as he was singing them, yes. even if it didn't have anything to do with yes. him personally. It was just an extraordinary yes. ability that yes. he had. Apparently, he wasn't a very nice person, mm. but, you know, that's, uh, that's another thing that's entirely. That's by the way, really, yeah. isn't it? Exactly. Well, this little story, um, it's, um, 
a, f- a few years ago and um, on another station. Is that all right? It's, I'm not going to mention the station or the hmm. presenter. I can't remember him anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And he was doing a, a mixtape and you could all ring in with suggestions, you know. And um, I was just walking about my place really half listening because it was mostly bands that I just haven't kept up with. And I thought it's all going to be these modern things, you see. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just half listened. Then I thought, blimey, because the, because the topic was killer first lines, really great opening lines. And I thought, well, it doesn't get better than fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars, does it? Hmm. And I, so I texted this in. And I thought nothing will happen. And an hour passed, and I was walking yeah. with my, Woo. my Oh, wow. You've done it again! How was that for you, Rose? Oh, that was sensational, this end. Nick, are you wanting me to go off piece and say something untoward? <laughs> because you've done it before. I can't help it. Every time I come into this studio, I sneeze. What is that? I don't know. Anyway, anyway where you were I, saying... Where was I? Yes, yeah. I was walking down my little passageway in my other, my other home. And I heard this voice say, Rose, off, off the radio. And then, then he played, you know, the Count Daisy Band and Frank. Mm. He, he played so much of it. I thought, oh, well, how lovely. And then it went back to all these other bands and things uh, that I didn't know anything about. So I thought, well, I'll just see what the top ten is. And, and it got to the sort of top bits. And somebody else came, and I was just so so surprised because there was this other singer. Right, he got to the the last few, and we had Joni Mitchell. I can't remember what song, and then Elton John with. So I thought, oh great, you know, with um, it's a little bit funny. Well, that is a good opening line, isn't it? And then not that, not above, that, not that great. It's a little bit funny. This feeling inside, meh. You don't, don't think know. that? No, I mean, it's not outstanding, I suppose, yeah. not to come right to the top. No, you're probably right there. Yeah. But then it was Aretha, so I thought, well, I've gone to heaven. And um, she was singing... Um, R-P-S-E-T-P-C. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Each day when I wake up. Oh. Which I adored. So I thought, oh, this is wonderful. He played so much of it. But that was number two. And mm-hmm. then, believe it or not... And it was mine. It was Frank with Ooh, the Count Basie wee, band. He put chirp, that at number pee, one. Chirp, pee, cheap, cheap. Right. Fly me to the moon. Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and it was just such a lovely moment, you know. Yes, well, that was that then. <laughs> <laughs> I like the story of when he was in um, Vegas, when he had all the people there, you know, the Rat Pack and all of that, and uh, he used to stay up really, really, really late. And because he was who he is, and uh, he was, uh, he he knew who he knew, nobody felt that they were able to go to bed before he did. And so they'd, oh, they'd, no. they'd be staying up all night, like it'd be four o'clock in the morning, and he'd still be going. And, and nobody had the nerve to say, right, that's it, I've finished, I'm, I'm going to go to bed now. No, Apart from... No. Apart from Dean Martin, who could, who was oh, well. pretty much the only one who could do what he wanted, because he was similarly connected. Absolutely. Apparently. All right. Thanks a lot, Rose. Cheers, my dear. Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Um, I'll probably get um, put in a boot and driven out into the desert now. Wembley Park. Hello, Christoph. Nick. Hi. Christoph. I'm phoning from my new style landline. Wow. That's uh, yes. it's a sensational uh, reception that we're getting. Well, I mean, I'm afraid that... Oh, was it Genevieve or Jennifer? I, I, um, she's going to have to give up her landline at some stage. Yeah, they're taking them away from us, aren't they? They are taking them away. That doesn't make, any, <clears throat> that doesn't make much sense to me, because if you're reliant on Wi-Fi, then the, your Wi-Fi will fail you eventually. Well, it doesn't, look, <clears throat> it doesn't quite work like that. I mean, I was forced to abandon my landline because... Um, the broadband wasn't good enough for the uh, for, for the CCTV camera system uh, we've got with yeah. our alarm company. So yeah. you had to put in uh, <clears throat> from a, from a different company the the uh, the higher speed broadband, and that basically meant if I wanted to keep my landline, I'd have to be paying twice. So so I you know, gave gave it up. Um, but it's uh, they the there must be a law or something which I'm sure the Tories will at some point um, abolish, uh, whereby you, um, 
your landline must provide you with an emer- emergency service, so nine 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 service. Yeah, but if it's plugged into your into your um, your Wi-Fi router, then if your electricity goes down, there goes your phone. Yes, but that's yeah, but that's that's why there, there is a law. There must be a law because I got a funny device, which is actually a mobile phone hidden inside, an, like what you know, what looks like a relatively traditional phone, a push-button phone. There is actually a little mobile phone inside it with a SIM card and a mobile number. And if you cut the power off to your router, then this backup phone cuts in, which means you can make outgoing calls. <coughs> only <coughs> if... And, only... Uh, until it's, until only... It's, until it's, only... Until it's battery. Only Sorry. if you get yeah. a signal. Now, I live in a place where you can't get a signal. I, I, I wander around my house, going to the back and the front, and... Uh, I just can't get a signal. I have to leave the house entirely to get the the most uh, piddlingly little signal on my mobile phone. It's terrible. You live out in the sticks or in the middle well, of the Well, no, city? not really. No. I mean, it's, it's quite oh. surprising. And and I've lived in two different places now, and, and they're both the same. Mm. Well, I don't know what they're going to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll have, to, I'll, have to rely, I'll have to rely on the post office. Oh, no. Or, the, or, or they'll abolish the rule, or the law, so you won't, they won't have to provide yeah, you. Exactly. I, don't, I, don't, really, I yeah. don't really know what will happen. But, but I mean, the, the, yes, I, you know, I, I kind of agree with you that in, in a way the, 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 the sort of mo- modern, modern technology, which uh, it really aims to make everything as low cost as possible, actually uh, also, and also has to have deregulation going with it, means that although... You, a lot of the, you know, the service improves in a lot of ways. You do get high-speed broadband and... Yeah, I theory. don't know. Do you? I it mean, does. we apparently have the worst 5G in the modern world in this country. Well, of course we do, because nothing blooming well works here. <laughs> it's probably because we do not buy it from China. <laughs> I don't know if no, I, I get phone calls from Japan with people on their mobile phone, and it uh, comes through clear as a bell. <laughs> But I get a phone call from somebody on a mobile phone from just down the road here, and I can't hear a blooming word they say. I, what, how, how that works, I have got no idea, because the call from Japan is actually being relayed to me on the same networks as, uh, as somebody in this country. So how adding 6,000 miles or whatever it is improves the signal is just a mystery to me. But, you know, there it is. It makes as much sense as anything else that's uh, happening lately. All right, thanks a lot, Christoph. 0345 6060 973. There is the part as well about the, your mobile phone radiating your brain. And that, you know, that uh, story sort of came and went quite a few years ago. People were talking about that and they're thinking, oh, you know, it's very, very bad. You don't want to put your phone to your head. And, uh, and absolutely nothing happened about it, you remember? I used to have a mobile phone that actually used to hurt my head when I, uh, I couldn't talk on it for maybe 30 seconds or more. Or it started, I, I did feel as though I was boiling what was left of my brain. And um, I don't really think about that much anymore. Maybe I've, <laughs> maybe I've done so much damage that it's not affecting me anymore. But that story re-emerged just the other day. And it is apparently very, very bad. Or they haven't proved that it isn't. It's probably more accurate. So I would be cautious. Of course, none of the above applies if you're using a landline, old style. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Right, so what are we doing? Given we are doing a radio show, but it does remind me that I do a podcast with Carol McGiffin. Oh, right, yeah. It's called What's Your Problem with Nick and Carol, in which the delightful Carol McGiffin and I try to solve people's problems while laughing our faces off. It comes out twice a week now. It's uh, available on Mondays and Fridays. Well, it's available all the time, actually, because they just stack them up on the World Wide Wait. Ask for it by name on an internet near you. What's your problem with Nick and Carol? If you wish to be amused, I think it'll be right up your alley. And if you want us to solve your dilemma, then send it to the following address. Nick and Carol at global.com. That's N-I-C-K-A-N-D-C-A-R-O-L at global.com and prepare for total satisfaction. Oh, right, yeah. It's, well, what's your problem with Nick and Carol? Now then, let's have uh, Guildford. Peter. Hello, Nick. How Peter, are you? great, mate. 
Yeah, we, 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 as to the landline thing, I, um, I've had a landline telephone for years and I've always liked it because I find it reliable. I found it reliable. Mm. And also, I have a heart condition as well as other health problems. And I have an alarm pendant, which you press if you have you know, uh, an emergency. Yes. Anyway, I had the landline, and what, as I say, what I like, if you get a power cut or anything like that, you can still use the phones. Mm. Anyway, I had a rare occasion the other week where the phone uh, it was playing up. Anyway, they came in, and then I found out they'd switched me over to the digital system. And here's where the, what the worry is. I had that alarm pendant, and like you said, broadband is always prone to, you know, to packing up. Yes. And what I, I, I rang up the pendant people and I said, I'm worried because they switched me over to digital. If the broadband goes, mm. that will mean all my telephones will go, my landline, and also the alarm pendant, which if I have, you know, a, a heart attack or something like that, uh, and, uh, you know, I worry that, say, it's early in the morning, you press the button and it won't work. Yes. And it, I think it's terrible. That so what did they say? The, they said, yeah, I'm afraid you're right, Mr. Betsworth. Blimey. Yeah, I, I, I was hoping they, like that other chap that was on earlier, that they were going to say, oh, don't worry, there's some kind of backup. Mm. And what my worry is now is if that, Broadband goes, and I have heart, pro you know, heart attack or something, which I've had quite a few. If I had that, and I go to press the button, and it doesn't work, or I go, uh, you know, to a landline, and that doesn't work. Yeah. And I think they, it's wrong that they can just force people onto that. I thought that there was it, some sort of uh, rule that they couldn't force people like you to have it for the very reasons that you've just outlined. Well, appa apparently, when they they did the phone, you know, they changed it over, mm. and a few days after that, I heard that the government had told the, these people not to force people on the phone. On right. these, but it was too late. They'd already done it. <laughs> and what I'm finding now... Can't they undo uh, it? I don't know. I was just what, but then I thought in twenty uh, late this year they're going to switch everybody over anyway. But it's a real serious worry, Nick, because I have used it in the past when I've had a heart attack and yeah. things like that. And my worry is I'm going to press it and it won't work, and uh, uh, no landline will work. You know, I've got a mobile, but mm. I just prefer the landline. Yeah. And it is really, that's the thing that these people haven't brought up. The danger that they're placing people in, you know, if that broadband goes down. And may I also talk about Rishi Sunak as well. I watched his pathetic attempt <laughs> to try and divide the country yesterday. Yeah. And he was going on, there's a lot of things at the beginning, I agree with anti-Semitism is evil and, you know, and uh, uh, Islamophobia is all evil and so on. But... The attempt to divide people was pathetic. And what struck me when he talked about um, extremists, I thought, well, <laughs> when are you going to sort out your own extremists? Yeah, exactly. Dirty P. Lee, Cruella Braverman, mm -hmm. and Le Mad Lizzy Trust. <laughs> you know, and the, the, the party just seems to be taken over, being taken over yes, by, by cranks and weirdos. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah, you know, and it's just. And then I, you were saying about the donors tonight. Mm. Well, if people, you can't. Re some people, if they can't realise now who the Conservative Party really represents, it's not the voters; it's their donors. Exactly. Wake up, sheeple! It's later than you think. That's right. I mean, they're not giving money because they're kind. They're giving <laughs> money for favours. Well, uh, and yeah, that tells unless, you all you I, need I to know. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, and they will say that. Oh, well, you know, the Labour Party—they're in the—they're uh, in the pockets of the unions. But the difference between the Labour Party and the Conservative Party is that the Labour Party gets money from the unions right now, but the unions represent millions of people. That's right. Billionaires yeah. represent one person themselves. That's right. They all. Ch I hope that the next Labour government. I know it's not very radical, but I, what I would like to see is a ban on 
businessmen or corporations mm. giving money to political parties. As much as, I it, think it's as, wrong. as much as people would chafe at the very idea, I think that it, we would benefit in this country if political parties were banned entirely from receiving money from a third party of any kind and were mm. funded by the taxpayer. Yeah, Not to the same yeah. extent, perhaps, that they are funded now, but then I'm sure that we could all live with fewer adverts. And Peter? The, oh, sorry. Okay, mate. All thanks. right. Thanks a lot, Peter. Best of luck. 0345 6060 973. Uh, on that subject of voting, Annie says, you've talked about mandatory voting in Australia, and I wanted to let you know that in Brazil, uh, the, uh, it, they have a mandatory voting for a country with 150 million people. I've lived here in Sao Paulo for 35 years and the system works perfectly. All voting done electronically, no paper voting. If you don't vote you and you do not justify not voting, then you pay a fine. If you do not pay the fine, this cancels your tax ID. Without your tax ID in Brazil, your life is a nightmare and you can't do much. Um, X, X, do your tax, EG perhaps? EG, do your tax returns, get a passport, sell or buy anything. Huh. Well, if it can work in Brazil, then surely it can work here for crying out loud. Howard texts, is Blackpool by the sea or is the sea by Blackpool? I never knew the correct answer, says Howard. Well, um, either way, Howard, don't actually go in the sea. Disgusting. Um, <laughs> and don't, uh, don't breathe the air around the sea and absolutely, definitely and totally do not inhale any of the brown spume. Oh. <laughs> Sandbatch, John. Uh, I, I, I was uh, getting worked uh, up uh, about when uh, you said uh, what? I, was, I clearly thought when I was getting worked up about when you said the Tories were selling tickets to a Liverpool game. I hope you. <laughs> yeah, that's that right. Out. Yeah, they're, they're yeah, selling tickets to thinking. selling tickets to a Liverpool game. Warning! Warning! Yeah, they they better not wear their uh, blue rosette. I think. No. And, uh, and that's what I was thinking, but then I get, then I listened to the uh, caller about singing about singer, talking about Frank Sinatra, mm. and great singer. But me mum was me mum was a uh, uh, mum was a, a music fan, and but she preferred Nack and Cole, oh, yeah. Elvis Gerald, yeah, mm -hmm. and they were all about the same time. That's right, yeah. Yeah. All and, tremendous uh, voices. I mean, we can live with all of them. You don't have to choose one or the other. Nat King Cole and uh, Frank Sinatra can uh, play in the same list on my uh, stereo. Yeah, I like Frank Sinatra too. Um, and they were all great voices and brilliant to listen to. And then there's Dean Martin, all that crowd. They're just, just nice to listen to. Yeah. Pleasant. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, brilliant stuff. And, and then you you got what you hit, what what they've got today. Rubbish. <laughs> All right, thanks, John. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott, Alexa, send a comment to LBC. Now wait a minute. I don't like that kind of talk. Now just stop it. It upsets me. Nick texts. Am I right in thinking that Titchy used an undersized lectern to give his really important address to the nation on Friday? <laughs> I reckon they get his props from a doll's house to make him look bigger than he actually is. Well, that's just offensive. <laughs> uh, Kerry says, The one thing that we learn from history is that n nobody ever learns anything from history. I'm sure it's a famous quote from somebody famous, but if not, then I'll claim it, says Kerry. Yeah, it was me. I mean, it's not an original thought, but I just keep saying that over and over again because it's true. It happens to be a fact. And Simon says, When you have a moment, please listen to Epitaph, King Crimson... Very appropriate lyrics. The fate of all mankind, I see, is in the hand of fools. Released in 1969. What's changed? Rock and roll! Uh, yeah, nothing. Nothing at all. King Crimson. Mm, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I respect their musicianship and all, but do I actually want to sit down and uh, listen to that album with that horrible cartoon of uh, a close-up of a bloke's face? Not really, no. I mean, there's a couple of tracks on it, but, but the rest of it is, like, unlistenable, in my uh, in my opinion. Shawville, Quebec. Hello, Robert. Yes, hello. 
Uh, you mentioned about um, uh, the influence of um, people who don't live in Britain on your elections. Yeah, just one moment before we go on. Are you speaking to me on a landline or a mobile phone? Landline. Isn't that amazing? He's talking from Quebec, which is about, what, uh, 150,000 miles away, something like that? About 3,500, I think. Exactly. And uh, you're, you're coming in clear as a bell. Go ahead. Yeah, um, well, the government supposedly re-enfranchised uh, people like me, British citizens living abroad, mm. and then the local authority, which I'm uh, trying to deal with, has done the most outrageous things to try and stop me from registering. Well, how do you mean? Uh, for example... Well, for example, uh, in order to register to vote, I have to call a certain number for this elections office, mm -hmm. and they've reprogrammed their phones to stop overseas callers coming in. And <laughs> uh, if you don't like that, you ha then if you don't like that, you have to call another complaint line, which they've also done the same for that number as well. Now, wait a minute. What you're telling me is that in order for you, living abroad, to give money to a political party, uh, you no, no. To register to vote. Oh, okay. To register to vote, you have to call yes. a number that does not accept calls coming Overseas. from outside the country. That's right. And if you don't <laughs> like that, you, you have to then call a complaint number. Yes. Which has also been reprogrammed the same way. There's a hole in all... my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza. Yes. Oh, it gets better. Um, you have to produce ID, which they've got a list of, which includes things like a British driving license, which of course I don't have because I live here, mm. a British council tax bill, which I don't live here, a um, British bank or building society, which of course I don't have because I live here. Mm. And in fact, if I had those, I would then be, by definition, a fraudster because I would actually have to live in Britain. But the question, Robert, is though, what business is it of yours to vote in our elections, being as you don't live here? Vote in Canada's elections. Well, on on the contrary, I mean, that's a decision for your politicians. But if you have decided to, um, if central government has decided to re-enfranchise British citizens who live abroad, mm. um, who is it for local authorities to override it with a Kafkaesque system? Yes, but why um, would somebody living abroad want to affect the direction of the country they have abandoned? Oh, well, um, in, in my case, I mean, um, most people I know um, are deeply, deeply concerned about this um, electronic currency they want to bring in. Um, and uh, each country that does so um, helps to increase the, uh, the ability for people like Trudeau over here to introduce it. Do you see? No. Electronic currency. What are you talking about? Well, the, the digital currency, which will allow the government to determine what you spend. The, uh, well, did, allow the, the government to determine what you spend? Yes, that's, it's already been announced by Rishi, and um, basically you would have a central um, uh, digital currency which is announced yeah. with everything will be registered, which would allow them, in theory, to be able to stop it, um, an expenditure if um, they determined you shouldn't make it. Well, you're already under that uh, system. It's just that the people that decide whether you are allowed to spend your money or not are private corporations. Not if I've got cash. Ah, K-A-S-H, right. But if you have uh, only digital currency and no mm. more cash, literally you could go down to the pub and, yeah. you know, Mr. Um, if Rishi says, oh, no, you shouldn't buy that packet of chips because exactly. you're going to make yourself too fat. <laughs> yeah. So, but see? nobody's suggesting, and, as far as I'm aware, getting rid of cash. In fact, the opposite is the case. Isn't there a push now to um, get people to use more cash? Or was that, Is that this country or was that America? There's some company, there's some country that has realized the error of their ways and for the benefit of the people's freedom, I think it's this country, uh, there, there's a move to um, reinvigorate the, uh, the method of spending cash. Many, many uh, people uh, like myself are trying to do so, but having said that, unfortunately, the plans laid out by Rishi, if you look into them, are the same as those of Trudeau to get rid of cash. Right. But that still doesn't answer the question, what business is it of yours, having abandoned this country, to uh, uh, to still vote in our elections? I mean, if you live in Canada, then surely you should vote in Canada's elections. 
Well, um, as I say, um, the view uh, your uh, central government has decided to re-enfranchise us um, and um, whatever we can do to um, try and stop digital currency, um, including trying to get the um, Rishi thrown out, mm. um, is what everybody I know um, is rather keen to because if he pushes in, um, brings in and gets rid of cash, it makes it much easier for people like Trudeau to do so. Yeah, I'm not sure that that's... No, I don't see. I, I don't think that the one follows the other at all. And if, well, uh, because you can say, look, this country, it all works in Britain, which it probably wouldn't, um, uh, you know, and they're stopping um, laundering and all sorts of other stuff, mm. so let's introduce it here. Do you see the point? No. <laughs> I think you're wrong, actually, and I think the fundamental point that you're, that you're making is, is also wrong. If you live in this country, then fair enough you can vote and determine the direction of the nation. But I don't think yes. if you live in another country, it's any of your blooming business anymore. But then again, as I say, if your government has decided to re-enfranchise... Right. Yeah, but you don't, you, you don't have to, avail, you don't have to avail yourself of that opportunity. Make a stand, mm -hmm. man. I am, and I'm saying you give me the right, who are the local authorities to stop me? Right, but you can stop yourself. You don't have to just do whatever the government says. In fact, that's the very reason that you're calling, because you don't want to do what the government says. I think we're fundamentally disagreeing there, Robert, but uh, you're just, we're, we're just going to have to agree that I'm right. <laughs> Another satisfied customer. <laughs> Message coming in from next door. Uh, you are uh, actually wrong, incorrect in every respect. This is from the Queen's speech, uh, 2022. We are reforming our... <coughs> We are reforming our financial services sector. Now we have left the EU to ensure it acts in the interests of communities and citizens, creating jobs, supporting businesses, empowering growth across all of the UK, which is just a, a lot of uh, noise and uh, words signifying nothing. We know that access to cash is still vital for many people, especially those in vulnerable groups. We promised we would protect it, and through this bill we are delivering on that promise. They have specifically talked up laws to protect cash. I knew it uh, uh, was uh, going on in this country. So there you are, you see. You need uh, concern yourself no more, Robert. Put your pen away. Your vote is not required. Appreciate it. 0345 uh, Let's have a call in. Uh, well, maybe I should do... Uh, how many texts and emails have I got? Oh, good grief. All right, okay, well, I better do some of these and I'll take some uh, calls uh, in, in a moment. Simon says, All respect to George Galloway MP, a guy with principled integrity. Oh, and a democratic... And I'm not sure... It's very difficult to tell tone in a text. I mean, he could be being sarcastic. I don't know. Let's uh, read on and find out. A guy with principled integrity, says Simon. <laughs> This is the third political party that he's been an MP for. What are you talking about? Oh, and a democratic mandate, says Simon. Well, that is true. Sour cream response from the usual suspects. Rishi Sunak wasn't elected. Gorgeous George was. Well, Rishi Sunak was elected. He'd become an MP. I mean, you don't technically be elected prime minister. You elect your local MP and then uh, they decide. So, I know what you're saying, but I don't think you're completely correct in every respect there, Simon. Carl texts, sat at Atlanta airport waiting for my plane back to dear old Blighty, listening to your show on my earbuds, laughing out loud randomly, which is unsettling my fellow... <laughs> unsettling my fellow travellers. <laughs> I hope I don't attract the attention of Homeland Security. If I do, then my plan, plan, plan will be to blame you. You got a plan? We have a plan. Plan, plan, plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, or you just go back to square one. That's why it's so important we stick to this plan, because we have a plan, we put that plan in place, where there is absolutely no plan. Right? We have got a plan, that plan is working. If we stick with it, we can deliver a brighter future for the country. But like my main message is plan, plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, no plan. No plan. I knew we'd get there in the end. He ain't got no plan. The plan is just to keep saying the word plan a lot and hoping that you don't ask what the actual plan is. Nobody has so far. I don't think anybody's actually pinned that man down. I mean, you keep saying plan a lot, but what's the plan? What is the plan other than saying the word plan?
0345 6060 973. Text 84850. Email nick a at lbc.co.uk. If you're on Twitter, it's at lbc. Oh, blimey, I'm a bit early. I hope the newsman is, uh, has heard this uh, exciting music and is rushing to the studio to deliver his message. If not, there'll be a, a brief pause. This is LBC. On your radio, on Global Player, and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. This is LBC from Global. Leading Britain's conversation with Nick Abbott. Oh, hello there. Very nice to meet you. Everything is going extremely well. Yeah, you bet your life it is. Well, everything is going extremely well for the Reform Party. The Reform Party has hit its highest ever polling number and is now just six points behind the Tories after the suspended Lee Anderson, uh, after they, rather, they respend, uh, suspended Lee Anderson for saying something calculatedly attention-seeking about the London Mayor Sadiq Khan. The right-wing party run by Richard Tice is currently polling at 14 percentage points compared to 20 for the Tories, which tells you more about the Tories than it does about the Reform Corporation. Because you know what? R right-wing parties have always had about that. They've always had about 10 to 14 percent of the vote. The BNP peaked at about 14 percent. The National Front peaked at about 14 percent. Kippers numbered about 14 percent. It ain't new. It's always been like this. The parties just come and go. They just call it something else. The results of the poll, which was carried out on February the 28th and February the 29th, suggest that Reform UK has benefited from the falling out between uh, Anderson his, and his uh, suspension from the Conservative Party. And if he joins Reform, then he'll be in the company of such vastly talented members as, um, you know, they've got, uh, oh, there's Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> and when he wasn't on... Um, uh, and when he was, rather, when he was on LBC, Richard Tice said that he had rejected two Tory MPs who had tried to defect to the Reform Party. And he said that he uh, refused them because they did not subscribe to Reform's values, principles and integrity. But he's reportedly been in talks with Lee Anderson to join, which tells us everything we need to know about Reform's values, principles and integrity. <coughs> It sounds very much like... This government will have integrity, professionalism and accountability at every level. Every level. <laughs> Tice says Leanderthal speaks for millions of people who are appalled by what is happening to our country. It's also, what would Donald Trump do? He'd say exactly that. It's a total disgrace. What has happened to our country? The American dream is dead. Yeah, stuff like that. Make Britain great again. And the nearer we get to the next election, people like this are going to really start ramping it up. Oily charlatans, the same type who got us to vote for Brexit, based on a teetering tower of lies and false promises, are going to be telling us that the only way they can solve the problems that they themselves have caused. Did that make sense? The only way that they that we can solve the problem... Oh, never mind. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but Leanderthal has been part of the very same Tory machine for five years now. Yet he seems to be doing the same thing that the rest of the Tories are doing, acting like they have not been the party in power for 14 years. Like they just stepped off a boat and can't believe the state of the place. And it's not working, is it? Labour are on 40%. Actually, it's, it's uh, more, uh, more than that, 44. And the Tories are on uh, 26. And I would encourage any Tory to defect to reform that is fearful of having to get a proper job. You know, fearful that their six-figure salary and expenses package isn't something they'd be able to replace in the real world because they don't have any skills that pay that well. Fly, my pretties. Because it's about time that the right wing in this country suffered the same fate as the left wing and had their vote split. Which would leave them out of power for the foreseeable future. Because that would really be speaking for millions.
who are appalled at what's happening to this country at the hands of people just like Tice and just like Anderson and just like Titchy and Cruella and the Blunder Trust and the Eaton Mafia and the bought and paid for empty heads of the insufferable tax dodging billionaire funded think tank Klingons who've stripped this country for whatever they can get while trying to distract us with fear of an invasion and unisex toilets. <laughs> the polling now, amazing. On the 16th of February, the Labour was on 42 and the Conservatives were on 28. Fast forward a week and Labour have gone up to and the Tories have gone down to. Wow, just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, eh, Titch? So in the middle of last month, Labour Party was 14 points ahead of the Conservatives. Now they're 18 points ahead. And people are talking about, uh, you know, the, oh, the Labour Party, they've had a blip and they're going down. No, they're not. Rishi Sunak just, <laughs> he just keeps standing still and going up. Like he has some sort of levitation device. Oh, there was a, f <laughs> there was a funny thing in uh, The Guardian today. I, I retweeted it. It said, um, oh, I've just lost it. Where is it? Oh, hang on a minute. I'm, I'm very unclear. I'm, I'm very unclear. I'm genuinely unclear. About how to uh, work uh, Twitter on my phone. I just don't like it. I always feel I'm going to make a mistake. Uh, in The Guardian, John Grace, he had one of his um, comedy uh, opinion columns in which he said uh, of uh, Rishi Sunak and his performance behind the lectern, he said, he is a Prime Minister, unfortunately, blessed with levitas. <laughs> Good one. 0345 6060 973. Tooting. Hello, Jan. Hi, good evening, Nick. How yes, Jan. You? Great, mate. Good, good. So, I'm ringing up because I um, take up a point you often say and, and um, m m making a few points. Some of them, maybe. A couple of three anyway, points. So, so um, you, you often say that the, the government will find a way, the present government will find a way to. Um, Call off it, not have an election. Yes. It'll be yeah. cancelled for our protection. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. you. Yes. So I'm just thinking of what happens with Lindsay Hoyle when, um, um, with that pandemonium in the House <laughs> last week, yes? Mm. And, and that um, with, with now Galloway in, who's promising to be like a tornado in the House, <laughs> and there's all kinds. Of, there's all kinds of things going on. Like the MPs are being warned. Yeah, so he'll, he'll be a parties. he'll be a tornado, like a, a a big gas bag of hot air. Yes. Well, I don't know about that, but because some some people are he's he's got very um what do you call it ambiguous or or, or ambivalent yeah. things being said about him, like that he's a demagogue, so he you can't have a rational argument with him. You know, you because he, he's appealing to people's prejudices and fears and whatever. Yeah, which and, fits and right same, in round here, yes. And at the same time, they're saying that he's a very articulate, eloquent... He's a very good speaker, no doubt about that. Him and... Yeah, uh, charming and eloquent, yeah, but ex can be lethal. Exactly, yes. He's, he's, he's eloquent <laughs> and he gives good speech, just like you know who. I'm a nutcase. Him. So, so Nick, so, so my, my thing is, is, is that I was thinking that... You know, things could get so bad in the house. What with the, with with over the um, the split over the <laughs> what's going to happen in Gaza? You know, mm -hmm. the ceasefire or yeah, whatever's yeah. going on. It's going to uh, it's going to it could um, really um, cause serious problems for Starmer and and also the Conservatives or just generally. But but also people have been saying that it's going to cause problems for Starmer, and as I've just described, he his his lead is increasing, not decreasing. He's oh, actually yeah, going yeah. up. But, but so, so another point I want to make is that you know there's this problem about about the security that that is needed for MPs now, but it, they may need security inside the actual house. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember seeing that it was televised? It was tele. I know, I know. This is, I'm not joking though. But it, 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 but but it was televised. How I can't remember the country it was in. I was, um, 
we're, we're, empty, we're oh, members yeah. of parliament, but yeah. I, I'm yeah. having fisticuffs. Every now and again, a, a, a fight breaks that? out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fisticuffs. I've seen a few of them, yeah. So I, I just, I'm not joking, but I was just thinking about what may happen or may happen in, in the future. So well, what happens in the future can often be um, uh, predicted by what has happened in the past. And yes. uh, George Galloway has been an MP twice before. And what happened? Can you recall a single solitary thing that happened? Well, no, I won't, but I was... I, well, yeah. no, let's just, hang on a minute, let's just pause and think about that. People are saying that this is the end of uh, civilization as we know it, and uh, democracy is at stake, but that yeah, man has been an MP twice before, and can you think of a single thing that happened? Well, he was actually, the last time he was an MP, the reason why he's wearing that hat, it says here that it was because he was assaulted. Right, but that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. As an MP, what did he do? Can you recall anything? He's, he's changed about so much, hasn't he? He's with now that, that, that they, what they call it, the, the Workers' Party, the yeah. Communist Workers' Party. Right. He, he has, was, was a, he was, he was... You're not answering the question, though, Jan. Think about it. Pause, take a breath. And think. I don't know enough about him. What right, he's been right. Up okay, to. so exactly. If it was d dramatic, as people are describing now, we're in great danger and the country is, you know, teetering on the edge of catastrophe just because that man has been uh, voted in in Rochdale. But <laughs> th he has been an, an, an MP before. And I can't think of a single solitary thing that, uh, that uh, was occasioned by his presence in the House. Can you? No. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. No, I can't, I can't. But I was thinking that things may get so bad in the house, not just because of him, though, but because of because of the the way they are. You know, they may they may they may just have to they may have to not broadcast what's going on. <laughs> they may not be able big, to broadcast what's right, going on in the house. Put, put a big uh, banner over it saying um, uh, uh, saying um, oh God, what's the word? Uh, it may not um, they may not have, oh, censored, so censored, problems. that's it. Big black uh, screen saying censored during but Prime Minister's questions. But they may get questions. even more sophisticated yeah. than that. They may even trick us by using AI clones of MPs and well, put that on. I don't know that, that this is actually you I'm speaking to. Uh, I mean, artificial intelligence is so sophisticated uh, now, Jan, that you actually might be a robot. Affirmative. <laughs> There's no proof that you're not. <laughs> No, but I mean, I'm just thinking that well, that as a scenario. Maybe yeah. it, it may be the way that into you know they may just not be to save democracy from from you know to, uh, as that it doesn't descend into some sort of what what was it said on oh, Mad Hatter's Tea Party worse than that or yeah. whatever it is. But you know, pure pandemonium. Mm. And it's not that it's not the extremists outside that the MPs need protecting from. It's the ones <laughs> inside the house. They're alone. Well, I think what would be a good idea is if uh, they stop bellowing so much during Prime Minister's questions, because I think that the, it's deliberate on the part of the Tories, and there's not that many more of them to make that much more noise. So it is deliberate on their part that they keep bellowing when, when Skier is talking in order to make the Speaker stand up and shush them, which makes Skier sit down halfway through his sentence every he can barely get a whole sentence out without the speaker standing up and uh, doing his uh now come on routine you know his tetley teabag routine then <laughs> threatening to throw people out but never actually doing it it just puts skier off and that is a deliberate ploy in my opinion of the uh of the conservative party they just make a, such a bellowing drunken racket that it forces the speaker to stand up and uh, and uh, Skier can never get to the end of a sentence. Whereas when um, Titchy is on his feet, you do not get the same kind of racket coming from the Labour bench. And if you uh, add Labour and uh, the SNPists and, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the rest of them, it's more or less the same. I mean, and they're, they're all packed in. So you can make a, a bellowing racket with, with ten people. You don't need hundreds and hundreds. It's, it, the, the number of MPs is not a significant factor in the amount of noise that they make. So the, it, I can't be the only person who's noticed this. The Speaker hardly ever has to quieten down the Labour side so that the Tory can uh, get their oar in. But always it's the other way around. He has to quiet down the Tories who all sound like they've just come from a, a long lunch, but it can't possibly be so because it's uh, it's uh, at lunchtime. 
unless they arrive drunk in the morning, which I or they're still drunk from <laughs> they're still drunk from last night. So that would be a start if they just bloomin' well shut up a bit. But they're not going to because uh, you know if they do indeed have a plan, that is the plan, and the plan is working. We have a plan, 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 plan and plan, plan and plan, plan, or you just go back to square one. That, that would be great. Can we just go back to square one? Pretty pleased with sugar on top. Thanks a lot, Jan. Cheers, my dear. Don't worry, it might never ha... Oh, no, that's right. It already has. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. <laughs> I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio, making a picture again. It's a radio show, dear. Chris Text, do you remember the Yellow Pages advert about an old man looking for a book, Fly Fishing, by J.R. Hartley? Yes, I do. And, um, huh. It was about the Yellow Pages, was it? I guess it was. There's a very good advert in that everybody that saw it remembers it. Not a very good advert, because I couldn't remember what the product was. But I guess, yeah, that was about the Yellow Pages. God, it seems like only yesterday that, that was on TV, but I guess it was decades ago. Scott says, my old man is in hospital listening to you, Nick. He has phoned me 17 times... <laughs> He's phoned me 17 times trying to get the global app working until I figured out it was working, but he hadn't put his headphones on. <laughs> He's 80 years old. <laughs> yeah, have you turned it on? No. Uh, Ron says, enjoy your programme every weekend. Thanks, Ron. Appreciate it. He says, three of my good friends loved F1. Uh, sadly passed now. We love spending time together. While they watched F1, which is boring for me... Uh, commentating non-stop. I enjoyed having a real laugh conversing with our ladies with a few beers, says Ron. Which sounds pretty sexist to me. I mean, ladies can watch F1, can't they? Women like being bored too. And Phil texts, can, the, can you get the USA to drop food on us? <laughs> it's, it's funny, but it's not funny. Yeah. 0345 6060 973. Malcolm Bodmin. Good evening, Nick. How are you, sir? Good, thanks. I think there's trouble ahead, my friend, for the Tories. Yeah, uh, no doubt. Thirty P is um, he's doing rather well since he's been out. He's actually in with the in crowd. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you would call it? <laughs> well, yes and no. And I think that uh, the boy Livingston, well. I think he's, he's, he's not going to have much fun because um, I did say somewhere last night that he's not going to get a look in in the chamber in Parliament because there's no way is Lindsay Hoyle going to be calling him to speak very often, I don't think. Did you and say, you I said think, Livingston? Yeah, Ken Livingston. Ken Livingston? Yeah. Do you oh, not sorry, Galloway. No, I always, I always mix it with the Galloway. Sorry, Nick. Right, George Galloway. <laughs> I, I thought George I'd, Galloway. I, I thought I'd had a, I, I thought I'd had a stroke, both, a stroke there, Malcolm. No, yeah, George Galloway. Both, right. Yeah, both outliers. Um, um, yes. In in in, in Labour history. Sorry, my apologies to both Ken and to George. Mm. Obviously, if they're listening, but um, I, I I think George Galloway. He's going to have trouble at mill because. Lindsay Hoyle ain't going to touch him with barge pole. And I think Sakia is going to quite enjoy, because, I mean, the Labour Party is, historically has good links with uh, um, the, the, the Asian communities up and down in the country. They, they largely support the Labour Party. And, and uh, while Sakia has had his, his stuff, so to speak, with um, the war at the minute, I, I, I think all of that was, was swing around, and I think... You know, it's all come back in favour. And I think George Galloway will lose some of his kudos when the Asian community, you know, finds out really what he is like, even though they've had him previously. So I see Sunak suffering more from that. Sunak being, you know, of, of, of Indian descent and all of that. Mm. And I, I, I can only see Sakia not, you know, 
being hurt too badly by Gallagher. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't um, think so either. I mean, I, I would not. I would not be surprised if uh, George Galloway was uh, in and out, not quite as uh, quick as uh, Liz Truss was in and out of uh, number yeah. 10. Absolutely. But uh, I think his. He, it would not be surprising if his reign was short-lived. But I would yeah. have to say that, you know, there's, the thing about George Galloway is, there's an entertainment value there. I mean, you might not agree with a single thing that he says, but there's no doubt about it. He is a uh, he, he's a very interesting and riveting, I'd say, orator. Well, and, and there's far mm -hmm. and 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 that talent is few and far between in the in the house. You know, I kind of miss Ian Blackford for that very reason. That, that there's yeah. few people that can stand up and then and command the stage. He was one. I'd say George Galloway is another. You got Uncle Nige, he can do it too. Uh, Titchy suit size is dismally bad at it, and um, I, and Keir Starmer is not that um, not that entertaining either. So you know, a little bit of uh, colour every now and again wouldn't go amiss. Well, I I, I disagree slightly in that I agree uh, um, the renegade sort of you know loose cannon quality is is a laugh now and again. But I I, I think for some of the names that you named, they're really nasty and current and and something. That you know isn't healthy in 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 politics. I think he's. I think again he's found a way into Westminster by not you know wholly um, um, healthy reasons. I, I think. He's, well, you can say in, that for, for, for um, ha at least half of um, the Tory benches. I mean, yes. it's just that they they cover up their oh, nastiness yeah. with a, a certain um, oily no, oily politeness. No, they, they don't cover up their nastiness at all. It, it's it's their nastiness that got them selected and elected as Brexit MPs because that's what the Red Wall is. They are literally one... Uh, um, yeah, but that does not make the majority MPs. of the Tory party, the, the Tory MPs. The, no, the majority of the Tory MPs aren't Red Wall Tory. Those, those are the newbies who are, I'm no, sure, you... absolutely freaking out at the prospect of trying to find a, a job that pays um, six yeah. figures. Nick, there's an awful lot of Tory MPs, the highbrow ones, your Bill Cash's, Liz Truss's um, mentor, um, whose name escapes me, the, the fella who she, um, um, Suella was writing to secretly. There's, there's a lot of the old highbrow MPs who are single in interest, uh, Brexit MPs, Bill Cash, as I say, others. You know, Doris Mogg, he's, he's pretty much a single interest MP, isn't he? Brexit. And uh, that's as far as they go. So yes, well, I would say that Rhys Mogg fits that bill entirely. I mean, his nastiness yeah. is covered up by uh, by uh, uh, an oily faux politeness. Yeah, uh, horrible, horrible. But I, I, I think there's, I think election by the summer. I think I'm, I'm, I'm likely to miss my May election deadline, Nick, which I've been calling since last August uh, against your belief. But I think I don't see them going beyond the summer holidays. Uh, myself with an election so well you know. the sooner they call it the less likely they are to win it i mean if i were titchy yeah. then i would just make it last as long as possible in the hope that world war three breaks out and um he has to I, declare martial law <laughs> i think the, the, the longer they go like, i i believe that the bigger they lose it right okay yeah, well we'll find out eh isn't it exciting yeah, yeah. Yeah. all right thanks a lot malcolm oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three Mick Tex, I bet Penny Morden is fed up with her timing as her stand-up and fight speech would have gone down a storm after Rishi's extremist forces are trying to tear our nation apart. Comments. Does that make sense? Kind of. A bit. I take full responsibility for that text not making sense. John says, Devon Locke did not fall at the last fence. He fell on the run-in. He was owned by the Queen Mother. He was about 50 yards from the winning post when he jumped in the air and landed on his stomach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you say so. Uh, Clive texts, I am a driving instructor. I often have to remind my learners that the speed limit is not a target speed to be achieved. Correct, Amundo. That's right. I get so sick. I mean, just, it's specifically on country roads. I mean, you go through town, you know, if you're doing 29 mile an hour in a 30 mile an hour zone, then the person behind you will flip their lid. They'll just go berserk. But at least you've got wide roads and you've got street lights and, you know, there's, there's places to pull in. If someone's uh, a numpty behind you, you can let them go by. Hoping that you, uh, at some point along the road ahead, 
you'll find them uh, on uh, flipped upside down and spinning on their roof. <laughs> That's my wish. I haven't seen it yet, but, you know, I live in hope. But on um, country roads, I do... Uh, uh, um, a sort of wave of fear goes over me when I pass a sign that says 60 on what is essentially a one-lane road. I mean, who are the morons that are putting these signs on a road that you couldn't possibly safely drive above 30 mile an hour? And now, because you'll hold up a line of numpties behind you, because we're surrounded by morons, who all want, because they've just gone by a sign that says 60, are determined to do 60, regardless of the uh, prevailing conditions. And it just, it just freaks me out. I hate driving on country roads. Hate it. B roads. Uh, just awful. And there should be the blooming law in this country that they should not put a 60 sign. Just because you're out of town doesn't mean to say that you can go 60 mile an hour down windy one-lane roads. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. But local, like I said, locals seem to think that because the last time they went round this blind bend and there wasn't a car coming in the opposite direction, that it's always going to be like that. What's wrong with these people? But you know me, I never complain. Whinging and whining <laughs> and moaning. Leading Britain's conversation. Nick Abbott. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. I am not one of your fans! It's budget week coming up, by the way, and uh, isn't, that, isn't that exciting? No. I have uh, full details. I have detailed files. Affirmative. <laughs> Uh, James texts, can you answer a super quick question as I'm nosy and I want to know why when people ask how you are doing or indeed any other LBC station presenter, why do you never ask how they are? Is it just for timekeeping? I can't imagine it's terrible manners, says James. Actually, James, it is terrible manners. I'm just not interested. <laughs> Plymouth. Hello, Julie. Julie, can I, can I ask you a question? Yes, I'm really well, thank you, Nick, Are and you? I hope you're well, too. Yeah, none of your business. <laughs> Love it. Oh, dear. Anyway, I wanted to agree with... Oh, country roads first. I lived in the countryside, uh, like little villages, for a oh, couple yeah. of decades. And you are right about the speed limits are nonsensical. Yes. But we do get, like, locals... What they get annoyed about is, like, um, narrow roads... Mm where visitors will not go into the hedgerow a little bit. Um, into so the hedgerow? Well, when I'm, you know, like the passing places. Yeah. They're great. And locals do use them because they're like, oh, gosh, yes, this is let them go. Mm -hmm. But if, uh, you know, there are lots of spaces where two cars can go, but you, you do have to go into the hedgerow a little bit. And, you, you know, and people are like, oh, I don't want my car scratched. Well, you exactly. I don't want my car scratched. But it won't scratch. It's not like there's someone dragging a key down it. it well, no, it is. It actually it. is. I've driven into a hedge and I've ruined uh, the paintwork on the side of my car once, just from a hedge. Nick, driving into a hedge and brushing against a hedgerow are two totally different things, my lovely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm not kidding though. I the, a scratch down the side of my car just from brushing against a hedge. That's true. It happened. Well, uh, and by the I'm way, uh, you people um, in the in the countryside, <laughs> what's so blooming important that you have to rush to get there? I mean, what well, is it that I is? I mean, try. do you have a cow that needs milking? Why are you rushing so much? It's the youngsters in oh. the village because youngsters get cars because you know you need cars to get around right. and that, and they get cars way too, you know, literally. They learn to drive on tractors, you know, and <laughs> when they're ten or something, and then they get cars when yes. they're seventeen. Right. And yes, it's it's youngsters. It's not as old. Yeah, people. they're uh, they they can't wait to the they're, they're they're heading for a date and they can't wait a single solitary second longer. No, they're probably just heading out of the village to some, find some life. <laughs> they can't wait a single right. second, two minutes longer. So I'm listening to Jan and listening to Malcolm. Mm. I sort of uh, disagree because I was glad that you said that Keir Starmer's numbers are still doing quite well. Because yeah. up, he, up in a yeah, week. Good, because there's so much happening. And um, a lot of it is very ugly. And... Um, I'm talking politicians now. Um, 
you know, like, I can't understand, I can't believe that Rishi Sevenbins made that speech because, I mean, his whole party, one front bench is full of, like, ugliness and and bad taste everything that he accused others of i mean that, it, once again it's what would donald trump do donald trump would accuse disgusting. others of that which he is guilty yeah it's absolutely disgusting i mean he may not have done it but he so many of you know how no, come he's enabling we, them he's, he's yes, promoting he them to positions of authority and then pretending yeah. that it's got nothing to do with him exactly and i feel like, you know, people comment about Keir Starmer and say, oh, you know, he's not doing anything or saying anything. But um, I always remember Michelle Obama saying, when they go low, yeah. you go high. Right. And I think if he's doing that, then I'm with him. I think it it's working. And uh, it just brings some um, calmness and yes. some sense. And, um, and some I know stillness are... and stability, yes. Yeah. And exactly. And people like people criticise him a lot for, you know, not, not having a, a, a stance on this or that issue. But, as we've just been describing, it's working for him. Not saying anything controversial might be frustrating for some people who follow this stuff for closely. But most people just want a change... I would suggest, and most people want that change to be in the form of a Labour Party uh, government. And so in that yes. regard, if what he is doing is working, so why do anything different this close to the next election? Exactly. And, I mean, I know some people are frustrated about the Gaza-Israel situation, and obviously it's, it's awful what's happening. Um, but at the end of the day, it's his call... Um, you know, if he, if people make him pay for it, then that's their prerogative. But it's, as you say, he's he's got to try for our country to get into government. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, uh, whether people feel that's not acceptable or no, I don't. I, I, but I understand it. And yes, I, it, I understand I'm it tired completely. Of all the shouting and <laughs> yes. the aggro. <laughs> yeah. Can we j just have a period of calm? Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Instead of this constant clown show. Absolutely. Totally. And you singing more. You know, all oh, that's all good stuff. Me <laughs> singing more. <laughs> yes, we love that. <laughs> right, well, I'll give it my best. Thank you, Nick. All right, Take thanks care. a lot, Julie. Bye -bye. Ta da. 0345 6060 973. Yeah, anybody want to hear me singing more? No. Didn't think so. Simon says, I don't know if it's my imagination, but your clips sound like they're in mono. Your mystical clip definitely sounds like, like it's in mono, and I'm sure it was stereo before, says Simon. Is there any uh, anything about that? Any truth to that rumour? Not that I know. Although Not I that we know of, no. I have you through one headphone so I can listen to the call. So. Oh, right. So he, I'm in mono in his head uh, anyway. No, I don't know what you're meaning there. I don't know what you're talking about there. So have you tried turning your equipment off and on again? Lee, maybe we should turn this radio station off and on again. Lee says, does Richie know how ridiculous he sounds when he calls a, pre a special press conference just to say, beware the enemy within? Everyone knows about the enemy within. It's the Tory party. It's about as effective as warning that we'll go back to square one. You know, the place that everyone in the country thinks would be an improvement. <laughs> yeah, I think, is it my imagination or has he stopped saying that? I mean, he still goes on about the plan, and he's got a plan, and the plan is working, and we must continue with the plan because the plan is working. And all of his uh, little mini-me's, they go out uh, and, uh, you know, spread the word, and they stick to the script like automatons, and uh, to an embarrassing extent, really. I mean, to the point that you don't think they've actually got a brain among them, that they're being programmed from uh, a central computer which I suppose essentially is exactly what's happening. But once in a while, they should, you know, have a, an original thought would be a good idea. Because that's why we elected them in the first place, right? We didn't just elect them to, be, to ape whatever it was that uh, Central Command told them to say. Because if, if that's the case, then we could just uh, fire the lot of them and just replace them with robots. Affirmative. <laughs> um, but, uh... Yeah. Yes. I forgot what I was talking about. 
Uh, Martin says, the belief that Trump supervised, Trump controlled nuclear weapons would somehow make Britain safer and boost its global influence is delusional, unsustainable, unaffordable, and with Trump's tiny fingers on the red button, downright dangerous. I'm digging a shelter, down, down, deeper and down. Don't be rude. <laughs> like status quo. Rock and roll! Uh, let's have a call in Notting Hill Gate. John. Oh, hi, Nick. Um, I, it's, it probably is a daft question, but um, I'll go ahead anyway. Is, is there a chance that when they get rid of uh, this, uh, this guy, Sunak, that David Cameron could become the Prime Minister? <laughs> Another one? Uh, it's been asked already, has it? Uh, what, you, know, you mean another, uh, them switching leader again before the next election? Yeah, I mean, they could do it um, either before or after. It, it, I don't think it really matter that much, would it? Well, I think after, unless the uh, polls are way yeah, out, it, then Keir Starmer is going to be the next Prime Minister. Oh, yeah, fair enough. But could we, we then become leader of the party? Oh, the, the, could David Cameron become the leader of the party? Uh, from the House of Lords. I don't know yeah. what the rules and regulations are there, yeah, but I, I would expect that he... I don't know. I tried checking on it, and a few people look at it, and it mm. got dafter and dafter as I looked. Yeah. And I talked about the prerogative of oh, the, mm -hmm. the the reigning monarch. <laughs> R-E-I-G-N. Yes. Um, and um, it still didn't kind of answer my question. Right. Well, and I think as long, as long as you um, have uh, buckles on your shoes and uh, silly trousers and socks up to your knees, then uh, you, you fit the bill. Yeah. So you'd say your answer is yes. I've got no idea, but I, I, I mean, if he can be a foreign secretary, then why can't he be the leader of the Conservative Party? I don't see well, why not. Yeah, yeah. he's getting around the world and representing the country, and nobody knows. Yeah, but at this uh, at this stage, the Prime Minister. yeah, at this stage, why not Mickey Mouse or Goofy? Why why not give them a go? Ah, uh, that's be a bit too serious, you know. Um, so <laughs> we've got a better characters. I mean, David's a real is a real laugh, you know. I mean, he's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> he's very, very good. You know, well, he's, I've, he's, yeah, I've never really put um, David Cameron and the words is a good laugh in the same sentence, but uh, maybe you know something I don't. Yeah, but I mean, it, 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 should, be the, it should be just the final, you know, hitting people back for being disloyal. And I mean, he started the Brexit thing. Yeah, he did. And now you're going to get paid back for what you did. You know, you, 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 you screwed them over. Yes. And now you're going to get paid back. Right. They, they're going to say, um, no, he's back. Back is... Well, I think, uh, I think what a good place for David Cameron would be is back in the shed where they keep the tools. I think this is nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, but he's going to have to write another two, three, four chapters, and he doesn't seem to have done too well with the first three. So it could be a bit of a problem. Right. Well, just as long as he doesn't bother us anymore. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, John. 0345 6060 973. Uh, where are we now? Lee says, when driving in the countryside, the area on the side of the road you are referring to is called the Soft Verge. Some say it gets this name because it lost a fight with a hard shoulder. <laughs> a listener with material. Oh, no. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Come on, we're running late. We are running late. 0345 6060 973. Glasgow. Hello, Gerard. Hi there. Uh, Gerard. I just want to talk to you about um, Frank Sinatra. Yes. Uh, I disagree with you for once in my life. About uh, what? I think that uh, Ella Fitzgerald's version of You Make Me Feel So Young was so much better. I think he ruined every song he ever sang, <laughs> and I'm a really, really strong Matt Monroe fan. Wow. Well, um, I think that you'll be propping up a bridge near you soon, Gerald. I will be. Yeah, I will be. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, yeah I, I find it difficult to believe that anybody would have an issue with the way Frank Sinatra sings his songs. No, he was dreadful. No, come on. How can you say that? He was absolutely dreadful. I know that would be assassinated if I were to walk into... The Italian quarter of New, New, yeah. New York, whatever it was called, mm. uh, I would be assassinated, right? But <laughs> it was, he ruined every song that he sang. As I said, you listen to Ella Fitzgerald singing You Make Me Feel So Young and then listen to Frank Sinatra's deplorable version of it, 
you will see the difference. I have I have on vinyl with my magnificent hi fi here, Elvis Dale singing it and it's amazing. But he ruins every song. He tried to talk his way through a song. He was not a proper singer. Matt Monroe oh, is the man you have to listen to. He no. was amazing. Oh, come on. I mean I, I think perhaps you are um, exaggerating for uh, effect, but um, yeah, yeah no. Nah. Yes, you I know, am, actually, yeah, yeah, a little am, bit. Yeah, yeah. the um, the, the thing is, all of the above, everybody that yeah. you've that you've mentioned, are are great in their own yeah, yeah, ways, sure, and yeah, and everybody that you've just mentioned yeah. uh, can sit alongside each other in, uh, in uh, you know on on a radio s- station mm. that plays that kind of thing. Well, or, okay, okay. It comes down to taste, I suppose. You know, just. Um, I have one taste, so yeah, and that's it. So. All right, okay. Is it is it raining right now in Glasgow? I have no idea. <laughs> have you not got a window where you live? I have curtains. Curtains. Oh, right. All right. Thanks a lot, Gerard. <laughs> oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Got curtains. Um, Nige says Rishi was beyond alarmed by Galloway's victory in the Rochdale by-election in his statement the other night. Perhaps he doesn't realise that democracy means that the person with the most votes wins an election. Hopefully he never realises this though because if he does he'll have to cancel the forthcoming election for our own good. I got um, deja vu. Have I read that one? Karen says can we start talking about Eurovision soon please? <laughs> yeah let, let me think about that Karen. No, 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 no. 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 But thanks for asking. Uh, let's see now. Uh, Winchester. Hello, Simon. Hello, Nick. How are we? Good, thanks. Uh, sorry, I didn't ask that, should I? Cause no, that's right. If you're not going to ask me, then yeah. what's the point? Very rude, yeah. Um, three things. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the uh, I expect that the guy from the Yellow Pages advert, the J.R. Hartley guy... Yeah. Uh, I think there's probably a good chance that he's probably dead now. Perhaps. I mean, he'd be 150 or otherwise, wouldn't he? It was a very long time. It doesn't seem like a long time ago to me. I mean, I guess maybe I just seen that advert recently on well, some place or other, maybe on YouTube. YouTube. There's a lot of memes that come up on on uh, Twitter and that. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So right, um, the budget. Mm-hmm. Now, the, doing a budget really is, 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 a, is a way of planning for, uh, you know, the future, isn't it? Near yes. and near and far. Yeah. Um, for God's sake, why can't they just get out? What are you doing? <laughs> what are they doing? Pl- making plans for us. Yes. We don't want your plans. Get right. out. Yes, uh, that is a good point. You, you're you wasting your time with your homework, uh, Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt. Uh, you're, yeah. we, you have delighted us enough. Now, the other thing is Galloway. Hmm. Now, I will give him his dues because when, I don't know whether you remember, but he had a show on a uh, Friday night on talk radio. No, I do not remember that. Uh, He had a a, um, three-hour slot on talk radio. This is going back a few years now. Mm. And um, he got um, sacked for anti-Semitism. Well, let's not get into that. Well, anyway, so he used to wind me up. And back in those days, I used to listen to talk radio. And I give him his dues because I used to regularly send him messages calling him names, mm. and I kept calling him Mister Pooh Stirrer. Okay, all right. I, th- I think we've uh, we've strayed enough in that direction, uh, Simon. And uh, you have delighted us enough. Thanks for that. Whatever that was. <laughs> uh, I, well, he did mention the budget. Because Jeremy Hunt and Rishi Sunak have been forced, apparently, to tear up their proposed budget at the last minute after a watchdog told them it was it was unaffordable. Apparently, they wanted sweets and comics, but Nanny said they couldn't have both. <coughs> and questions are being asked about who is in charge. With the Chancellor and the Prime Minister set to spend the weekend in Downing Street, recalibrating their plans for the vital pre-election statement after the Office for Budget Responsibility threw it in turmoil. I mean, it doesn't really matter what they put in the budget. The public have decided we've finally got to the place where we won't get fooled by the promises of rainbows and unicorns and of hot, gushing showers of money pouring all over us. I mean, 
They could say that they'll give us each and every one a cheque for a billion pounds and a personal foot massage if they want. No one's going to believe them anymore. How does the phrase go? Fool us once, shame on them. Fool us a thousand times over and over again and we're morons. It's something like that, isn't it? Their initial package of tax cuts is likely to be scaled back, apparently, as a result of the ruling by the Office for Budget Responsibility, because they don't want to go down in history as having seen the blunder trust blow up her premiership because she was numerically literate as a soap dish. Absolutely. And then do the same. And then last night, leading Conservatives said it was wrong that the budget was effectively being dictated to by an unaccountable quango. They wanted it to be dictated by people who have no idea what they're talking about. Much better. Speaking of which... Jacob Mee Smug said, The OBR... Oh, I won't do the voice. He said, The OBR's forecasts are amazingly inaccurate, yet it's been given this godlike status. Can you imagine someone being amazingly inaccurate, yet being given a godlike status? We could have cheaper food, clothing and footwear straight away by getting rid of the protectionist anti-trade tariffs that the EU imposes. And it would be very good for the British people and it would provide certainty. And I think once there's certainty, the country will begin to reunite. He lied. Former Treasury Minister Sir Simon Clark said, we all want a budget that reflects our fundamental conviction that lowering taxes can boost the economy and stimulate growth which would be great if their fundamental conviction had any basis in reality, but it doesn't. What boosts the economy is a healthy workforce who feel their work is valued. Not a country of sick people on NHS waiting lists who are on minimum wage ju drudge jobs going nowhere. I mean, it could only get worse if that melting candle, that wax cadaver, that balloon of fetid air, Lord Frost, rose from the casket he sleeps in to bloviate about it all being somebody else's fault and everything would be fine if only we listened to him in other news <laughs> guess who said what oh no former cabinet minister lord frost says the treasury has allowed the office for budget responsibility to usurp its role and effectively to blah 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 And then there's the perennially wrong John Redwood, who said, I've been telling them privately that there's a lot more flexibility than the OBR let on. There's, they always get the deficit wrong and overstate it, he said. It's two and a half trillion pounds we owe. Do you know how many zeros there are in two and a half trillion pounds? All of them! And the Mail says that Jeremy Hunt now looks almost certain to press ahead with plans to trim planned public spending after the election. What? Trim public spending? Public spending has had a number one head shave. There's nothing left to trim. They'll be taking a bit off the tops of our ears if they trim any more. And the Mail said he is expected to scrap the existing tax break 
for non doms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure he will. You know what's stuffed full of non doms and those who benefit from the largesse of non doms? This government will. Exactly. Will 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 exactly.